Yes, yes, yes. Woo! We're back. We're so back, baby. That's right. Hassan is back from uh, celebrating the royal coronation. That's buddy. right. That's right. I've, I'm back. Which, let's be real, Hassan. What the, what the f, dude? You're out there having tea and crumpets to celebrate King Sausage Fingers. I mean, who it's, are you? It's time. Are you to American? Admit, it's are you? time to admit something, Ethan. I've, I've always been British my whole life. What? Yes, that's right. I've, I've been betraying myself as an American man but also a Turkish one, but in reality, much like Boris Johnson, who is also Turkish. That is real, by the way. Look it up. He's an Ottoman son. Todger? I Todger? have been infiltrating American spaces at the behest <coughs> of the Queen. Well, yo, I'll have you know, I always knew that you weren't American. There was just something off about you, yeah. bro. Yes. Yeah, Thank so you. I'm not surprised by that. But welcome back. It's good to be back. Ladies and gentlemen, finally in the we land of freedom. All domestic terrorists. I saw, like, when I travel, I'm not a big travel fan. I'm not a big travel fan. I don't like leaving my house that much, which I think. I feel that. You, yeah, you oh, yeah. definitely agree with that. Mm -hmm. And I, uh, you know, there was only one time where I felt sad coming back to the United States of America, and that was when I came back from Japan. Yeah. Well, when I come back from London, I was literally about to kiss the fucking right. border patrol guy. Right. Like I, I felt like I had finally breached containment. Like I had left, and and was back on like you know freedom soil. Is the food horrible there? Were they serving you beans on toast for breakfast? Yes. Yeah, bro. Dude. Okay. Hell nah. Okay. Sorry, the Ian. The food is so fucking garbage, dude. It is so bad. Like. It, it's just entirely Kasha. carried by its colonies, Booyah, obviously. Kasha. Like, it, there's there's mm. really good Indian food. Uh, I've heard that there's really good Caribbean food. Uh, I wasn't able to to try that out. And London is really interesting because it's like it's a cosmopolitan city. Obviously, it has like some of the best like Michelin star rated restaurants on the planet. But like, if you go to like an average place, if you go to like a regular place to grab a quick eat, mm. a quick bite, yeah, mm -mm. it's Marcos. so garbage. So what's a quick bite in England? What kind of shit? Jelly do you use. Huh? Jelly do you use. <laughs> jellied eels. Jelly, jellied eels. Jelly deals. No, they have what like. What the fuck? I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this. Like British food, like actually British what? cuisine, feels like uh, <laughs> like a liminal state. Is that like a liminal space? Sorry. Like uh, it's supposed to be something. Like your eyes look at it and you're like, this resembles food. But like it's it's a little off, you know. But what I mean? what is it that they actually eat on the street? Like what do they grab on the go? What are those? It's mostly just like you know kebabs, kebab and shit like that. that. Yeah, but oh dude, nobody eats that. No, they do. Nobody Old people fuck. eat it, dude. If Don't you sure? eat that, you should die. <laughs> I mean, yeah, people are dying. I think all the, I think the Sumstroman people and the jellied eel people need to get together. I've had Sumstroman. It's awful. I've had it too many times. Fucking ruined my Including mouth. yesterday. We ate it yesterday. Oh, you did? Yeah, yesterday's episode was such a disaster. We had this guy, <laughs> Hunger FF, on, who's like the world-famous prolapser. <clears throat> he made a dildo replica. Is this COVID-related guy? <clears throat> he tied into that. That was he's Howie. Not, that's he's that. not the guy. <laughs> oh, he's not? He was, it, he was stealing prolapse oh. valor? <laughs> no, no, no. He, no, no, he's got valor. That's not the problem. Okay. The problem was... <clears throat> is he was calling into the show to talk about his new prolapse dildo that he made, first of its kind. I saw it. You saw that? What they happened? showed they showed it to me when I came in. So, so we had tell to the people what you said about it. I have a very controversial opinion on it. It doesn't look scary at all. It looks tasty. Oh, that. <laughs> what okay. do I mean by that? <laughs> you might ask. Well, you just came I, back from England, so I don't. No, it looks like <laughs> it looks like kokoreç, which is uh, one of my favorite uh, Turkish foods. It's, uh, sheep intestines. <laughs> That's human intestines. Uh, right. Oh, that's why it looks like that. Yeah, it's human intestines. <laughs> oh, okay, that makes sense. It literally Put looks like- Put some rice and, and good stuff in there no, and let's get I, to work. No, you're supposed to like cut it like very finely. Like you're supposed to ch ch chop it with like tomatoes, onions, peppers, okay, and like a Hannibal whole Lecter, lot of Jesus. spices. Well, not the human one, the, the sheep one. And it's well, delicious. <clears throat> yeah, This see? is it, right? Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> yeah. And then the final product is in the bread. It, like, if you scroll down, there's like one, 
Yeah. That's how you're supposed to eat it. It's a late night eat. It's one of my favorite things to eat. It's so bread cum. It's so fucking delicious. And, 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 and hunger's fully prolapsed anus is what made you think of that. Yeah, because it looks identical, does it not? Yeah, just it raw in the raw form. But uh, anyway, not only do you show his massive prolapse dildos in the background, but he also there was a picture right behind him of a naked dude. People were wondering if it was. It wasn't just the dildos. It was the naked dude in back with his cock out. Yeah, that's uh, yeah. God. That what was else? that was the one that made me yeah. think like, oh, Ethan fuck. Klein engages in homophobia again. What else is new? You know what I mean? <laughs> Listen, where's Team Star on this? He's been slacking. <laughs> Dark cock. Listen, yeah. I'm pro cock, but cock. I'm not yeah, but, pro. Yeah, but keep it in the bedroom, strike. right? Yeah, yeah. I see. What, yeah, okay. Don't say gay. Yeah, okay, Mr. Florida. Well, I mean, I don't you think have tried to get my. Anyway, he really. It was really. For years. I, I'm sorry. I love hunger, but that was that was fucked up. What he did to us. <laughs> like we we coached him so thoroughly on what to do and what not to uh, do. Trying to get it. Trying to tell gay man to to do certain things. Okay. So close to Pride Talk Month. Mm. Yeah. You know, do they have frozen pizza in England, I wonder? <laughs> I'm sure they do. It's probably fucking nasty, Even though. worse than it is. It's here. even worse than, like, American frozen pizza, probably. I mean, it's just, like, what <clears throat> I was going to say is this. The reason why I said it's, like, a... Is, is the correct term liminal state? Isn't that what it I is? Like, when you... Uh, liminal space? Like, when you look at something that's, like, weird, and your brain can't, like, wrap itself around like what it actually is? Like thing? So I'm on, I'm on pretty sure where he's coming back home, okay? And they have, like, sandwiches, that they're offering if you're hungry. And I'm a hungry boy. They were not giving me enough food. So I Fuck go in and I, I go and raid the sandwich cabinet. And they have a sandwich in there called the Plowman's sandwich, right? And you look at it and you're like, what what would like a basic ass sandwich? Like put some fucking Plow. ham and cheese and like maybe a shred of lettuce and like I'm good, right? Yeah. The plowman sandwich Plow. is like is like <laughs> pickles and cheese. But like not even Cornish pickles, like like jellied pickles. You know, American cheese. food's not that bad. People come, they laugh it wasn't at like us. This. You know what I mean? Like we know how to throw a sandwich together. Plowmans. Yeah. And sweet. also like these babies, they cut the crust off. It's like, are you are you just a country? I don't full mind. Of I don't mind. The, uh, like I like crust, but I don't mind it if they. But crust is it? The crust it's, it's like, dude. You know what I mean? Like grow up, England. And then Eat another one crust. was coronation Sam. chicken. Coronation chicken sandwich. And that one was like chicken a sandwich? curry chicken sandwich. It was like odd. Again, with the crust cut off, English people, grow the fuck up, dude. The, a lot of this looks way you, better you and way more edible. I'm sorry, I have to say this. They colonize half the world who's in hunger and they're cutting off the crust? How yeah. dare you? Well, they also rarely use the fucking spices. Death for, to the king. Wow. Controversial. Um... <laughs> Another thing was I went to. By the, the way, the, the reason rib. I say that so people don't get mad at me. What? Sorry, let me just let me just. Uh, Tom, did you see this? Tom Segura, he went to Ireland, I think, or Scotland. It was so funny. Oh no! The, see, he said "fuck the king," not "death to the king." Yeah, right? it took a it too different. far. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> I almost hit the button on that. <laughs> Dude, they go crazy. Yeah, of course. He's, it's in, funny. he's in Ireland. What do you mean? Dude, it's, it's just funny. Like, they give him a standing O for like a <laughs> full minute. Very yeah. funny. Yeah. Irish people love, <laughs> Irish people love saying shit like that. <laughs> Unless you're talking to some Protestants. All right, so. Um, yeah, but, but long live the king, whatever. I don't know. Not death to anybody. No death to anybody. I meant to say fuck the king, but you know okay. how it is around here. Um, you didn't mean like a specific king. I, I think it's like valid to say, you know, death. To I was the talking king about like Charles. A, uh, you don't have to clarify. Yeah, I was talking that. about. You him. don't have to clarify. How, just, how are you gonna milk an oat? It was him. It was him. Okay. Well, Sausage fingers. I'm, you're, I'm about to make a coronation, coronation yeah. sandwich. The MI6 out of those fucking is fingers. the MI6 is coming after Harry and Meghan yesterday in New York. They can come after you too, motherfucker. You better watch yourself. Ooh, come get me, bitch. I've told you I'm a part of the British intelligence service. So anyway, we have a ton of stories actually. Uh, the three main stories that I've got here is Elon entering his uh, Nazi era. Oh yeah, he's lots on that. He's getting, and I love saying this about a 50-year-old man, red-pilled. 
<laughs> I love that. It's like, mm. right. you're not a fucking teenager in an online forum, dog. You're like a 50-year-old man. Absolutely. With like a hundred children. Right. Okay. I mean, I, I'm for, right. What the fuck and is so, wrong with you? And then the other one is Return of the Queen, a.k.a. not, well, Diana, uh, Diana Feinstein, who's not in a box, like Queen Elizabeth, but who, um, uh, ah. could be soon. Could be in a box soon, Diane which Feinstein, would be a great relief to many. Diane Feinstein is in a prison of her own mind right now. She That's is true. unfortunately uh, in the throes of late stage dementia. She's and been for years. Her yeah. brain is jello. I mean, yeah, that goes on for a long time. Like my grandmother Pretty. had Alzheimer's. She passed away uh, a couple years ago. And it went on for like 10 years, you know what I mean? Like, right. especially with a lot of medical care, you can keep someone alive. Well, it was that clip of her being asking the same question twice was three years ago. Like, she's had a lot of time to deteriorate. Yeah. It, it goes on for longer than that. It can go on for like a decade, maybe even two decades, really. Uh, it's just entirely dependent on how well uh, taken care of she is. And it seems like she's got a great medical team. Oh, yeah. Just... They're, you know, they are weekend 100, at Bernie's. 100%. She's just a cadaver being held up by marionettes. Yeah, know. but hey, you know, that's like a lot of our politicians. And then the other one is Rudy Giuliani, who's being faced with a $10 million lawsuit for basically essaying this uh, <laughs> former aide who's got a lot of tea. I mean, he is, a f he is so gross. <laughs> like, I don't want to sound... <laughs> this is going to sound bad. And so keep uh -oh. your hand on the button, Dan. Okay. Um, my mouse is hovering over the button. Being being essayed, horrible. Oh, you're saying it's extra bad because it's Rudy Giuliani? It's is that what extra you're bad because he's so vile. Yeah, I mean, usually a lot of, I think a lot of sexual assaulters are vile and gross regardless. But, right, but he's got to be the a, most extra, vile um, person in the world. When it's Rudy Giuliani. He's got to be the most vile person in the world. Disgusting. He is disgusting. <laughs> his dick, his is dick really has gross. tonsil stones. Oh, dude, come on. Oh, God. I can't believe it. We're so, we're back. We're back. I, I escaped we're back. to England. I escaped to England to avoid this, okay? Yeah, but that's just that's my point. He's so vile. He's S, yeah, he's S tier creep. Yeah. So those are the three uh, main ones I want to talk about, but there's some good stuff at the top as well, so. Yeah. Um. Oh, the other thing I was going to say is, as far as England goes, uh, but we went to the Ritz for high tea to Ooh. celebrate the king's coronation. <laughs> I have a picture of that. Should yeah. I pull it up? You can pull it up if you want. Um, and wow. I gotta say, very mid. <laughs> like, yeah, of course. High tea is stupid as shit. It was bro. mid. Like, they have sandwiches and scones and like pastries crust? and stuff. No crust. Look, you can see one of the sandwiches there. But like, the sandwiches are not that good at all. I'm yeah. I I, I got Austin for the bill. I think it was like five hundred quid. Uh, 500 quid for that Yeah, because it was a big tape. We had, like, a bunch of people. Okay, okay. We were, like, five people. And are you supposed to dress up this nice? Yes. No, they literally won't let you in unless you have a suit and tie. For Uncrustables? For, for, yeah, for uh, <laughs> formal apparel all the way down. As a matter of fact, I had to go buy. We all had to go buy suits. Last second, uh, we bought our suits. I had, a, I had boots on, luckily, that I had brought to England because I thought it was going to rain a lot. Uh, so I wore those, which was fine. But I didn't have a tie. So as soon as I walk in, there's like a person playing the harp. And it's like this, you know, everyone is like 85 years old. Um, this lady runs up to me and says, no, no, you mustn't come in. Oh and I was God. like, what the fuck? Wait, why? What the hell? She's like, you do not have a tie. Oh my Michael, God. Sir, please see yourself to the, uh, I, I don't know. Was, Dude, the there, English There's are... a room where they have like, they give you. Loners. They, they have loner ties. Yeah, they well, have loner nice. ties. They have loner jackets. They have everything. The I mean, English just okay. can't be helped. I don't know what to say. <laughs> you know why they don't put crust on the uh, sandwiches? Because they save it for the royalty. They're crusty old asses. You are so focused on the crust. You love the fucking crust. Huh? I, it's just, it, to me, it's so fucking silly. I mean, I don't really. I cut the crust off for my four year old son. Oh, I. Four. I I, I don't really care about it one way or the other. Like I, I like the it's crust funny. of the sandwich. I Cut don't have an issue off. with it, but I, 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 don't, I certainly do not have as big as a distaste for the people it's who funny. cut the crust off. All right. So there's anyway. way worse stuff about British food than just the crust being taken removed, being taken off. Here is some memes. Let's see. The LGBT community has forgiven Hassan. Thank you. What did they? What did you do to them? All right. Is it? It's an ongoing meme that 
I, like I hate the term ally. I think it's like so. I don't know. It's like very liberal. I'm an ally. Yeah, I I hate it. So I always say I'm an LGBT foe. Okay. And I because see. my community is like very gay, like I have a massively queer uh, audience. So it's just like an inside meme that okay, I say I'm a foe. I'm that's LGBT pretty foe. funny. That's very funny. And oh so, yeah, and of course Austin is gay, right? So yeah. He's this is him. And I act yeah, of, and I, I shit on him all the time. So like I yeah. in a homophobic way. Okay, good. <laughs> yeah, you're Excellent. gay. You're gay. Uh, Crowder. Here's just a few stuff at the top here. Crowder. I can't get enough of his uh, descent. Fucking watch it. Uh, <laughs> I was doing work for me either. <laughs> He's no, fundraising. Either. That's what he's saying to YouTube. <laughs> he they uh. Let's see here. Can you link me the tweet? I prefer that over the, the email, but he tweeted the same thing. He recently got five videos removed and only one strike. This man still has a YouTube channel. Alex Jones hosted his show and did, uh, like, yeah. Here, I mean, I have a screenshot because I, I have a controversial take on this that you might not agree. Here's Alex Jones on Stephen Crowder's <laughs> show. <laughs> Dude, what? <laughs> no. Yeah. yeah, that's what he, that's what they got the strike for. And I would love to watch the video, but I'm just going to show the picture. That's insane, dog. That's yeah, video, like, the video is so much worse. Oh, can you just, can we just hear the audio? Yeah, Maybe you can probably fun. play it. If we don't show it, it's probably okay. Let's just see the audio because I, I haven't seen it. I haven't. Heard it got it. removed from Crowder's channel oh, uh, that that episode. So uh, well, then they removed all of Alex's guest. Episodes. This is like right. one of those yeah. things where it's like it's so over the top racist that it like rolls back around and becomes funny again. <laughs> For me, at least. I know people will get mad at me for saying that, but, like, that's so insane. Like, so what the fuck are the, you doing? The context, if you can believe it, actually makes it more insane. They were having a conversation about, uh, like, anti-Asian discrimination and, like, hate crimes. Like... And he sided with the hate crimes? Like, what? <laughs> yes. Well, that's their stance, pretty much. <laughs> that's no, that's no, wild. They, they weren't siding with that. They were talking about how terrible this was, or whatever. And then <laughs> Alex Jones just out of nowhere is like, "Oh, by the way, I'm Asian," and then starts doing like a Chinese voice. So here's and Stephen was like, "This is fire. This is great content. <laughs> this is the funniest thing I've ever seen." Probably that's what he thought. So uh, Crowder, Stephen, victim complex. Crowder is uh, declaring his tenth war this year on YouTube. Fuck you at YouTube. I don't give a shit that we're one strike away from being banned permanently Dude, he's from so the hot. platform. God, he's so cool. That doesn't work for me either. He's so sick. No, that doesn't work this either. doesn't square with the baby bitch boy voice that we yeah. heard. BTS. We will not pacify. We will not kowtow. And we will not stop. We won't work stop. For either. Not, not ever. ever. That doesn't work either. No, 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 no. That we will say either. when it's over. <laughs> Hashtag mud club says when it's over. <clears throat> you want to hit that last one? <sighs> you want me to say that? Not some patsies. Oh, not some patsies. That doesn't work either. Don't miss tomorrow's episode. This means war. 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 <laughs> the stakes have never been higher. It's like nobody so transparent that this what? is the grift. It's so fucking transparent. Like. You are such a dumbass if you look at this and go, wow, he's doing such like a brave and he's taking a brave and bold stance like over and over again against fucking YouTube. And the stance is what? Getting Alex Jones to host your show and do like, like, you know, this is 2007 YouTube memes. <laughs> more like 1950 grandpa memes. Well, I mean, I'm just saying there was oh, yeah, like, I got you. this is this, this, this style of content was like very, very. And when uh, I was, yeah, when I was 13, that was cool. I mean, I, I, yeah, I guess. <laughs> anyway, I, I feel like that shit banged on YouTube though for like for like a long time. Like 2014 is like the last time you could do that and get away with it. <laughs> right. And then everyone had to delete those old videos and old tweets oh, of yeah. them making fun of Asian people in an identical fashion. Yeah, but uh, he's actually fundraising on this too. It's it's identical to his tweet, and he's he really wants people on that mug club, man. I'll tell you what, why. I'll tell you what, man. That mug club is something else, bro. Yeah, he's. I Can y'all drop the video? What's going on? We know it's in the it's in the doc. We know exactly oh. what this is. Uh, I mean, he outlined that this was his like Which one? business strategy Third. when that uh, Jeremy boring oh. back and forth happened. If you remember, where he very openly was saying like, "No, I want to get banned so I can like drive traffic to the mug club for my only clans." You know what I mean? Like for <laughs> where I can be like extra racist. Uh, 
Uh, and and that's like our business strategy. That's how we drive. That's how we generate revenue. Um, and that's precisely what he's doing. And his fan base is like, they're so stupid. I, I don't know how else to describe it. I mean, I guess, you know, yeah, they're looking for this they're kind dumb. of content. So, yeah, of course they're stupid. They're dumb. And also, maybe, are old people watching Crowder? Because I feel like old people fall for any damn thing. Middle-aged divorcees. Okay. Yeah, that's, I that's think there's prior. a lot of, yeah, there's a lot of like 35 plus probably that watch him. Yeah. I know anyway. for a fact that I'm the youngest, I have the youngest audience on, on uh, politics across the board on YouTube. Like, literally the youngest. Um, That's so, what it's all about, baby. Yeah. Right. We, are, we are here, and we are young. Yeah. Here is the, um, <laughs> here's the, the voice. I haven't heard it. Yeah, I wasn't going to say the other one. Wait, do, I probably don't show this, Ian. Yeah, don't show it. Let's just, let's just listen to it. Always be prepared. That's part oh, of yeah. the problem. Oh, great, great. Ian. Good call, Ian. That's exactly what we need. Yeah. Oh, thank God we got a dumbass alert. Yeah. Well, just last week, uh, the the, uh, the attorney general came out with a new rule saying no crime statistics can be used by the FBI. Well, how do you put agents yeah, definitely. in areas <laughs> if you don't know where the crime? It's like if you're fishing, exactly. you've got you know sonar to see where the fish are. So they're saying, oh, well, we're not even going to look at where crime's at. Well, the, well the, the natural thing for me to do would be like, okay, so you're telling me that it's unsafe for me right now as a person. This who's guy's Asian. such a or, fucking piece remember of when, shit. Remember uh, when Islamic people also they, so dumb. As Asian, by the way, you do. Is this a new thing? Is there a benefit? Oh, stop it. My goodness, Alex. <laughs> Hello, how you doing there? He's a child. Oh, my God, bro. That is, that is, so, my boss, why my are they even school. laughing at that? It's like, you really it, get... They sound like, uncomfortable. And you hear somebody say, they're like, stop it, you're a child. Like, I think, like, they can't, like, go too hard, but I think even those guys are like, holy fuck, Alex, stop. It, it was this well, live, I think or did like they upload mid. it? It's, it's mid. It's like... But humor wise, if I am to analyze this as like just simply comedy or an attempt at comedy, right? It's just it's even worse than Steven Crowder's bits, which I did not think was possible. Right. This is what you do when you're like a 14 year old and go ahead and show this still. And right. you wanna be you wanna be fucking edgy. You know what I mean? You're like like you wanna you can't be funny. You're not creative enough right. to, to make people laugh. So you're just like trying to get a reaction by being like, I'm Asian, by I the way. Look it. at me. I did it. Yeah. Look at me. I'm Asian. Ha ha. Like literally. So this was live. They did not choose to upload this. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. No, okay. they, they always stream their show. Okay. So he's I'm got not, I'm not, bro. I'm, I'm saying it right now. I don't I'm, have a button. I don't have a button, but it's just, it, this is like, again, it's so desperate to be edgy that I think it removes the edge from it and it, all of a sudden loops back around to being like funny. Show it. You know what I mean? It's like, cause you watch it. All right, it's one of those things that says like significantly, like looking at this is nowhere near as frustrating as like, you know what Steven Crowder did with like the George Floyd execution, uh, recreation. You know what I mean? Cause like mm. there's a deliberate attempt to, to, to basically vilify black people there. Um, whereas in this one, you tried, you swung, really and you impression. missed God. so hard. I don't know. I see. I hear uproarious laughter, boy. Let's you finish tried, the clip. You tried, you swung, and you missed so hard that it, it basically uh, made you look way worse rather than, like, invoke any kind of, like, negative reaction, I think. I don't think you can look worse than Alex Jones. <laughs> hey, I love Asians. We have to make fun of it. No, we I'll love the red Asians. Red. I'll do a redneck for I'm the roughest, toughest hombre east of the Pecos, baby. <laughs> <laughs> and I lives in my trailer and I drinks whiskey all day. Do I think everybody's still, fair game. Do people still mm -hmm. use the Pecos as a landmark? Nice save, Alex. Yeah. Quick, let me do an impression of a white person. <laughs> See, I'm not racist. just myself. I'm just gonna yeah. be myself for a second. Does that make sense? Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Like, it's yeah, no, so no, yeah, no, I understand uh, what you're you saying. Dirty yeah. dog. You good? Yeah, well, all right, <laughs> that, it, it, that it looped back around and like it softened the the uh, like it softened the edge of it almost. Mm -hmm. I get it, bro. Like he is oozing with a divorced dad, um, pathetic aura, which is, Steven also is. Uh, you know, they're kinder. He's is, joined is that Alex club. A divorced dad. He Let Is me he... look it up. I, I seem to recall that he got divorced recently, but I could be mistaken. Alex Jones divorced. Now let me finish this. <laughs> My name's Yosemite Sam. People pray for me. <laughs> <laughs> right, yes. He is divorced. Well, and have... He spied on his ex wife uh, was a story last year. Um It's <laughs> awesome. How did he spy on her? Uh he was like hacking her phone or something. Wait, what? 
He had like <laughs> software, spy oh, software. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Alex Jones is a fucking Alex Jones is literally like the the Elden Ring boss of divorced dads. <laughs> um, he once famously flew a helicopter around his uh, his his uh, estranged like divorced wife's house with the children inside, terrifying the. In neighbor. a helicopter, dude. Yeah, rolled. he's like he is a complete fucking freak. As Here, here's a Pecker. quote from his ex: Alex is obsessed with me. Has had me followed for years, has done everything to infringe on my liberties and personal freedoms to impose himself into my life, Kelly Jones said. My life is a gauntlet of waiting for his next nefarious and disingenuous or overtly threatening move. Oh, I believe that. Sounds about right. He's like a one-man Scientology. <laughs> Pecker. Be some whiskey right Oh, boy. Now. Oh, gosh. This is... All right, so whatever. Oh, I guess that's, that's why you needed the... Yeah. So shout out Alex Jones. You guys are really uh, doing important work over there on Louder with Crowder. And uh, we're we're real proud of you guys over there. It's not funny. Also, Blair White, who I generally have a strong distaste for, how they act. She's like so, she's so Ollie London. I mean, straight up, you know, uh, just just willing to throw every trans person under the bus Why? just for a little crumb of clout from the right. But here she is actually uh, with an interesting admission. Have you seen this, Hassan? I mean, this is what she does for the record. Just drama. She always, yeah, no, she's done this like a bunch of different times. If you, like, any, I, I don't really know anything about her. I don't really follow her consumer content at all, Why? even like uh, to shit on it. Because I think she's like a non-entity. She's irrelevant in the grand scheme of things. Uh, you nailed it, though. She is like uh, a classic uh, trans person who hates uh, uh, other trans people, basically. Uh, and she's the Candace Owens of like the trans uh, conservative movement, which is like three people. It, it is um, literally three people: it's Blair, Ollie, and um, Caitlyn. Caitlyn. Yeah, that's the whole. So that's the that's the Triforce. So, which by the way, there's a really <laughs> funny thing about Caitlyn Jenner and Matt Walsh talking to one another, where Matt Walsh is actually correct, which uh, we can look at in a second. But what I was gonna say is, so uh, Blair does this stuff all the time. Like, if you recall, she did. Um, she had like a like a video where she was like, all conservative commentators lie all the time. They always like, um, these these smaller conservative content creators regularly will try to like, try to do drama and do a By little the way, bit there's of infighting in the same way that like leftists love doing uh, all the time. Mm. And this is, this is nothing new uh, with her. Well, she has said this before. She's done stuff yeah, like this before. Maybe it's not that interesting, but I'll play it anyway. It's short. How they act. I'm talking about political commentators, not just people on the right. None of these hoes act, live how they act. The amount of demented people. Okay, I'll go off. You want me to go off? I'll go off. Yes. The sister, amount of please. demented people that are in Spill the, tea the right wing commentary sphere is actually scary. That's your friends, by the way. You're talking about your friends. You're talking about the people that literally think you're a freak that probably would be happy if you didn't exist. Yeah. Nice. I hope you enjoy the clout. Um, one thing that the libs do have correct, they're right about shit ever so rarely, but they're right about this. The, <laughs> That's awesome. The, a lot of these, not all of them, but a lot of these pro family values people on the right that become famous for that live like absolute monstrous degenerates in yes, real life. That's your people. Bro. Orgies, code. Yeah, that's your people. So like, but if they're lie about that. That's the foundation of their whole identity. Then their their whole personality, <clears throat> everything they do is a lie. I'm going to stop Blair here for a second and defend Steven Crowder. Uh-oh. <laughs> Steven Please. Crowder was living out his fucking values on camera. That wasn't like anything outside of the norm. Like That's mistreating your insanely pregnant wife who was barefoot and pregnant inside what? of your house is like a, you know, it's a pillar of conservatism. That's a fair point. He's being yeah. true. Being uh, hyper controlling uh, and, and an absolute freakazoid, uh, that is very much a conservative principle. He has said it on camera. The only difference is you got to see what it looks like in action. And when you see what it looks like in action, it's a little bit different than saying like women should stay in the kitchen and like women actually enjoy uh, uh, being a happy wife, happy life uh, uh, style uh, trad wife for me, Steven Crowder. Like when you say that on camera, it's very different than like actually living that experience on camera in a ring footage I feel uh, that, that was unearthed by the the uh, ex-wife uh, and that, her family. Yeah, that's a good point. Secretly gay. That's another thing they're right about. These oh, libs the who think that a lot thing, of these yeah. um, 
right wing commentators who talk about gay stuff. You're speaking my language, are girl. Gay. They're right. She sounds just like me. <laughs> when I saw this, I groaned because I'm like, oh, Ethan. Ethan's gonna love this. <laughs> this, this you always say that, and I always try and push back. And but it's like, true. Bro. There are some who aren't, though. Like I don't think Matt Walsh is gay. No, I don't think Matt. Walsh I think is Matt Walsh is like a hateful little gremlin. Like he's just a sweaty. Yeah. He's disgusting. a cloud demon. He doesn't care. He just wants. He likes the attention he gets by hating trans people. I think he genuinely he lit- fucking despises. He literally. There was a leaked email with him, wasn't there? Where he was like, "I just need to do whatever it takes to get yeah, to get on." Crowder. Th- when right, with got, Steven Crowder. Steve Crowder I mean, hacked, right. Or no, when he got hacked. Sorry. I mean, he's a yeah. psychopath. So you know what I mean? He doesn't give a yeah, fuck. Yeah, he's awful. Holy like, shit, bruh. What? This picture is cursed as fuck. Yeah. <laughs> Caitlin made Ollie the uh, spokesman for They both her. look like Bogdanovs at, at this point. I don't know what's going on there. Yo, what happened? I saw such a funny tweet. They said, why do all transphobes look like this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a... it's. I shouldn't be giving you some of these memes, I feel like, because you're going to use it inappropriately. But it's a very common trope in, like, uh, <laughs> trans circles is that, like, turfs are bricked up always. Um, turfs are bricked up? Bricked up means, like, you're not passing. It's it's actually an anti-trans thing to say. But trans people will always say, Wait, like, what? turfs are... But tur- okay, so go ahead, unpack that for Bricked me. up, originally, in trans circles, meant... Uh, your brick, like you're not passing. You're like very, like huh. uh, you just you're not passing as a as. But bricked up means boner, right? No, huh? Uh, it does outside of trans. So bricked up, like your physique is. Yeah. Um, so so th- so they. But say, anyway, that's like. So who's bricked up? Turfs, trans exclusionary but, radical feminists. But turfs aren't. But turfs aren't trans. No, they're not. Which so is the wh- what? What does it mean that they're not passing? That's the entire point. It's that Turfs say they're not passing? No. Let me explain. Gender, as we all know, is a social construct. It's an expression. It's an identity that you show to the rest of the world for the most part. It's uh, in, in many respects removed from sex, if you want to consider sex as a, as a separate entity, right? And it's not a rigid binary in the sense that, you know, Ben Shapiro and the like try to claim it is. And uh, the greatest demonstration of the fact that gender is an expression and not the rigid binary is that a lot of these cisgender, uh, heterosexual or, or uh, you know, queer, sometimes uh, TERFs, mm. trans-exclusionary radical feminists or, you know, anti-trans people, do not fit in the same rigid confines that they espouse, that they claim uh, gender is supposed to be as. I see. You're cis, but you don't fucking look like... A, a woman. That's that's okay. what that means. Okay. Bricked up. So I shouldn't say bricked up like that in that context. No, you can say bricked oh, up I when you're talking about, like, you know, uh, I would say getting you. horny. I disagree. No, 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 no. I want to use it now <laughs> when talking about trans issues. It's just bricked up all the time. No, don't use okay. it. Don't Definitely don't use it. Well, I would never say that to a trans person, right? That'd be awful. You say it to, like, uh, you would say, like, uh, the Hogwarts lady <laughs> is bricked up. But she's, she's cis. She's, like, normal. She's normal. Or, I mean, she's cis is what I mean by that. So, J.K. Rowling, I would say, is probably the least bricked up she's surf out there. But, all. like, there are photos. Like, fuck, here. You want to pull this up? So, um, type, J, type J.K. Rowling bricked up. No, 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 no. Uh, J.K. Rowling uh, famously went to, like a, like, a, what was it, like, Queers Against Groomers or something? Or the LGB she did? Foundation? Yeah, she's, like, super anti-trans. I Dude, mean, she's the queen of uh, transphobia. Um, but she held, like, she went to an LGBT meetup, or an LGB meetup, sorry, and... Mm. A BLT meetup? <sighs> I looked up J.K. Rowling LGB meetup, and it said, did you mean J.K. Rowling LGBT meetup? And the first article that comes out is, seven times J.K. Rowling supported LGBT rights. Mm. Alright, let's move on, this is boring. Okay, thank you, Blair, you're derailing the show, nobody cares, blah. Alright, thank you. Uh, next, uh, Nick Fuentes talks about wanting to drink 16-year-old tit milk. Uh, this guy continues to be... I want to drink it. This is the dude who met with Kids President Trump, Hitler. who was touring nope. with Thanksgiving uh, West. dinner with President Trump. He's the man. Matter of he, fact. Yeah, he's the man, dude. He does the show out of his mom's basement, literally. Yeah. He's literally Will Ferrell from that, uh, Wedding Crashers. Mm. Chaz. Mom, me low! Chaz. <laughs> okay, let's watch. No, bitch. I want to drink it straight from the tap. I want it raw. I don't want to wait a moment. 
right when the milk is good, I want to start drinking the milk. Same thing goes with women. Breasts. I don't want to turn 30 and find some 20-year-old, 29-year-old woman that I have something in common Old with. And it's L. like, hey, properly aged, like wine. Dog, women you're don't age like permanently wine. lonely. Like, what, <laughs> what do you virgin. fucking mean? He's unfuckable. So you are uh, it's such an unfuckable little gremlin. Like, <laughs> like he has the option, mean? bro. You know what I mean? You take what you can get. He also has me. the creepiest little fucking salad fingers, dude. It always freaks me out. <laughs> I guess it's good for his booger eating. Like, yeah. Right. Really, you really do like deep excavation. Yeah. But like, god damn, his fucking fingers are so fucking long. It freaks me out every time I see it. All right, let's, he's getting to the good part. Wine. Women don't age like wine. They age like milk. They don't age like wine. That's not how their hormones work. Say That's it, not brother. how they work. Yeah, I gotta find. I gotta find my sixteen-year-old wife. Probably when I turn 30 or something. Because here's the thing. I don't want to be like, let's say I get married to a 18-year-old now. Old. Six-year age difference. Loser. Gross. When I turn 40, she's going to be 34. Gross. Yeah, that's Ew. fucked up. Well, if I'm 30 and she's 16, 14-year age difference, when I'm 50, she'll be 36. When that's I'm, what I'm talking about. When I'm it's divorce her. <laughs> that, and then I'll divorce her and get a new 16. Year. Yeah, that, that marriage is good for like 15 years. She'll be 26. Yes. Now we're talking here. Now, now we're talking. My heart sank a little now bit watching it. This is like the grossest fucking <laughs> yeah, he's, he's fuck. This is it's like one of those things where, like, you know, I'm an advocate for free speech, but like maybe not. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, this guy. Like, he's invited. not even saying some Nazis. He's just saying pedophile shit, which yeah. is, you know, out in the open. And the then, and sense. then they talk about how pedophiles are ruining America and they're at the high levels of government. This man's just coming out and saying yeah, it. Yeah, bro. You see, EDP, he pulled the fucking uh, transphobia parachute cord too. He did. He's on the. We got to save our children. Uh, Yo, yeah. Yeah. No. Bad. Yeah. Which is fucking hilarious. And there, like, and people are down with that. The cupcake? No, guy? I think I think it's it's uh it's actually probably worse for like the conservative movement that like an out and about open pedophile who is most famous for being a pedophile is talking about how we gotta kids. protect our kids. Oh, I know how he wants to protect the kids. Yeah, no, right. he means like we must protect our kids from me. That's yeah, what he's saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you see this face here? Don't let him anywhere near him. Yeah, but he, Nick Fuentes, this guy speaks at like the highest level Republican rallies there are at CPAC at the Turning Point. No, he was banned from CPAC. Okay. Yeah, Turning no, Point. Not he CPAC. had to do his own. He had to do his own. But like, wasn't he a Paul point? Gozar, Marjorie Taylor Greene? Like, you have prominent national Republicans that have like appeared on his. Uh, he's appeared the man. As a part of his like, you know, PAC. Gozar, right? No, he's They're the man. Yeah, our, our favorite guy. Now Paul you Gozar. can see a, an alternative vision for how how things could be. I want a 16 year old that's untouched, untouched, yes, sir. pristine, mm -hmm. untouched, by, that's my man. innocent. That's what we all want. Petition. What we all want. Uh, and, and <laughs> also, kids love Hitler. All kids love Hitler. Yeah. It's what we all want. All kids 16 year olds want <laughs> an older guy who's like capable and strong. So not you. And everything to uh, sweep them off their feet. That's what everybody wants. 16 is the age of consent. That's what everybody wants. <laughs> Yeah, uh, dude, I don't know, like, first of all, this, I don't think it, anything needs to be said about that. Yeah. yeah. Moving on. Thank yeah, you, Nick Fuentes. Tough. It's what everybody wants, and uh, thank you for finally saying what nobody had the, the balls say. Lauren Boebert divorced her sex offender husband. Yeah. Again, family values at work Lauren again. Lauren Boebert, who also was uh, exposed to her sex offender husband's penis at the uh, ripe age of 16 in the same way that Nick Fuentes was just talking about. Oh. So that's a fun little segue. <laughs> yeah, in a bowling is the alley. age of consent. Ew, dude. This is weird. This is his. This is Nick Fuentes' profile, man. On, on oh, stop, apps. dude. Oh, my God. It's like the fucking <laughs> console stones. It's Look just at this. not right. It's just not right. <laughs> it's something so fucking freaky. Uh, the family values conservative woman cites ir irreconcilable differences for the breakup, while her husband of 20 years allegedly lashed out in, at a process server. Now, here's my favorite part. This is her husband who flashed his dick to underage girls at a bowling alley. Including Lobo. He, he, is that how he got her? I think so. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. I, no. Really? This is... Uh, Look it I, up. I had never read this, but here, there's actually the written uh, statement from, from the girls. 
Oh, I did not see that. Yeah, so this is her husband of 20 years. Trish and I were sending... Standing at the snack yeah. bar, and, and she came up and looked at my tattoo on my back, and she pulled down her sock and said... Look, my, I can't see. Mine is fading. I can't Mine is see fading. It. There's a camera in front of me. I can't see it. Then Jason said, I have a tattoo on my dick. Um, Trish and I said, yeah, whatever, and turned away to ignore him. Then Jason came up behind us and pulled his penis out of his pants. His thumb was covering the head, and all I saw was the shaft. Trish and I turned away and went and told Tammy or Terry, Some, something. Tam, like somebody. I was standing at the shack bar because Jason was harassing Nora since we came in. They were really strange all night. I think was uh, maybe Lobo was with him at the time. Yeah. Oh, there's more. Yeah, I think like Lauren Bobert was like with him while he was flashing these. Uh, right, and so what surprised me about this olds. that I never really realized is this account of it. She was approached by Lauren Bobert first. And is like, that what it says? Yeah. It, she came up and said something about her tattoo and then showed her her tattoo. And then I guess the husband was there too. Does this not sound like they were like grooming together? Yeah. Does it not like sound like they were like Ghislaine? doing this together? Yeah. yeah and they he, say at the end, they were being really strange all night. Like I always just thought there was like a, an argument or something in it or whatever and he whipped his dick out. But like this. Sounds like they were kind of approaching these young girls together. Anyway, she is so fucking vile. Another phony who talks about family values who is like basically a groomer uh, with her husband. Or this is him. Wow. Wow. What a fucking... I'd like to see... Bro, what... Jesus. What compels <laughs> guys like this to spike their hair? That's what I want to know. Because, like, you're making yourself look more bald, brother. What the <laughs> fuck is that? That's true. You see the more dumb that way. For, like, listen. Listen. That shit was, like, I guess that shit was a jam in, like, 2003. Okay? Mm -hmm. Any point past that, if you're, like, above the age of 12. Hey, little girls, you, you want to see shit? my dick tattoo? God damn. Sorry. Go ahead. Sorry. Oh, my God. She got the holster, too. Jesus Christ. <laughs> hey, little girlies. Everybody gather around, check out my dick tattoo. Rifle Colorado, brother. This is how we do it. Hey, don't lock me young. Mm -hmm. Why don't you take a seat right over there? 16 is the perfect age, I tell you what. Anyway, this is a rising star, or, well, she's ri her star has risen. This is Lauren Bobert. Lobo. A huge, uh. Almost got fucking owned by some random dude in her own district, for the record. Like, yeah, but she still won. She barely squeezed that victory out. But uh, two people watching, again, I will remind you, this is the conservative party. Lauren Boebert, Steven Crowder, Blair White, these fucking scumbags are soulless. They care about nothing but power and money and clout. And they will uh, throw anyone under the bus. The thing is, so do the Democratic Party, right? Like, so do the Democrats uh, in positions of power. But at least they're not doing it in the same fucking way that these freaks are doing it. You they're know not as I mean? bad. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's what the I mean. Like, the Democrats. No, there's, there's really fucking horrifying demons on there, too. Like Henry Cuellar, Bob Menendez, you know, all of the uh, all the classic like centrist Democrats that uh, play the role of like a rotating villain in the in the uh, in the Democratic Party to stop any kind of progressive legislation from ever passing. Like, fuck those guys. They're fucking demons. I hate them. But having said that. For the the broad majority of the Democratic Party, at least like aesthetically, don't uh, run around and do these like culture war things that they don't necessarily believe in in the same way that like Lauren Boebert does. You know what I mean? I mean, at least they're advocating for stuff that actually will help people at least a little bit. Well, they're doing it aesthetically, specifically, so that they can like capture a, a, a you know yeah. base of voters. What noise was he making? She was, growling. she was growling at Sam because she just oh, came in. Fine. So. <laughs> um, so anyway, uh, condolences to Lauren on losing that fine specimen of a sex offender. We love that for him. But that's a good segue, let's see, into um, uh, Diane's not in a box yet. Uh, and boy, this is a real fucking shit show. 
The Democrats are such cowards. This woman is almost 90 years old. She's had dementia for probably five years. And uh, she, when she arrived back in, in Congress, someone was like, uh, what's it like being away for so long? She's like, I haven't been away. Yeah. I haven't, I've been here the whole time. She's doing great. Yeah. She said, those who know, know, and those who don't, don't know or something like that. And That's then they true. wheeled her off <laughs> before yeah. she could say more incriminating <laughs> shit. Why are they so intent on keeping her? Why are they doing this to her? Why are what they do you doing mean? Well, there's um, a there's a, there's a uh, very plausible theory that uh, came out uh, just this morning that uh, that we're gonna get to in a minute. Like, dude, she's not fit to play bingo, let alone run our fucking country. Yeah. You know no, what I mean? It's like, like, it's like what if the you fuck? think if you think she's fit, if you think she's mentally fit to be in such a powerful committee, like. Part of the part of the only power that the legislative body has at 89. this point is appointments, <clears throat> like court appointments, and also investigations into, I don't know, the Supreme Court, for example, which currently is under a lot of fucking reasonable scrutiny for the first time in its goddamn history since its fucking inception mm -hmm. with Clarence Thomas and his like financial misdeeds and uh his refusal overall to uh, you know, write down um uh, lobbying dollars that he's gotten from people that actually have a lot of business with the Supreme Court, right? Like, right now, you need uh, the the uh, Senate Judicial uh, Committee to, to she launch the investigation. She's, she's a part of it. I don't know if she's That's a chair, fucked. but... I think she might I mean, be the chair, dude. But the point is this, right? They they do appointments, they vote for... Uh, they, they, uh, they're the ones who are supposed to investigate the, the uh, judiciary. Put in judges. Um... Yeah, and they're not doing that because they can't do that because one of the uh, you know more senior, most senior members on the fucking uh, committee is dead. Okay, she's functionally a vegetable that can move around. Yeah, she is the uh, second behind Dick Durbin. Dick Durbin. Mm. Yeah, Dick Durbin, show. who's also my boy. Whip. What yeah. a name, she's huh? She's also died. Yeah. So Diana, uh, Diana has missed ninety-one Senate votes. Since getting oh, yeah. the we have, shingles. We have a graphic, by the way. <laughs> Turn of the Queen. Welcome back, Queen. Biden hasn't been able to get any federal judges confirmed since she, her absence, and it was announced in February that she'd be retiring at the end of her term in 2024. Uh, there have been calls for her to resign. Nobody's nobody wants to do anything about it. Uh. Nancy Pelosi, actually another old ass fucking freak, by the way. Cr who, fuck Nancy Pelosi, dude. And her husband scumbags. Gosh. Fuck them both, dude. She's, of course, she's going to say, she's 80 herself. Like, step aside, grandma. But she's like, yo, it's sexist to ask uh, for Feinstein to resign. I'm sorry. Senator Feinstein should or shouldn't do. Senator Feinstein has been a champion for California. Great. Move the fuck on. I dreamed I saw my maternal grandmother right. sitting oh, God. by the bank oh, Jordan, swimming stop. pool. No, go, Jordan, go Cut on. Off. Jordan, continue. Oh, so, the region was exposed <clears throat> dimly. Preach, brother. She had the appearance of a thick mat of hair. She was he said it all? herself absentmindedly. Go on. <laughs> So she here's walked the thing. over to me oh, God. with a handful of pubic hair compacted into something resembling a large artist's paintbrush. She pushed this at my face. Right. I raised my arm several times to deflect her hand. Mm -hmm. Finally, unwilling to hurt her or interfere with her any further, mm -hmm. I let her have her way. Thank you. There it is. Said it all. So Feinstein as a vote is genuinely important for appointments uh, for for judges, obviously, because, uh, you know, slim majority and all narrow majority in the Senate and all. Um, but also they knew. They knew that she was like brain dead for uh, years now, Decade, as you correctly pointed there. out, there was always talk, you know. There's always like a political article here and there that like talked about whether she was capable or not. Um, when they were doing the the Kavanaugh confirmation, uh, she had a lot of like weird takes that, uh, and she had to be like oh, right. removed she was like, from the room the and best, stuff. Like, this is the best run yeah. committee of all time. Or I forget what she said. And, and you like, want to know what? Senator? You want to know? You want to know what's fucking awful about all that? 
They knew all of that, and then they still put her on the fucking uh, Judiciary Committee. Yeah. They still mm -hmm. put her on, so the Democrats are fucking responsible. It's why do they do it? Because, well, this may not be why, but all the head, senior, high-level Democrats are all, like, 75-plus old motherfuckers who don't want to be, uh, who don't want to retire. No, it's the same. It's that, but also there's a secondary reason. And that reason is what I just mentioned to you already. Maggie Hassan. Kirsten Cinema, who's now independent, Joe Manchin, uh, they did it. Bob Menendez. These people in the Democratic Party play a very important role, a much more important role than the, the AOCs and the Bernie Sanderses and even the Ed Markeys of the Democratic Party, which are more to the progressive side. Those guys are bad. The progressives are bad. In the eyes of the National Democratic Party, the DNC, the, 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 the people who hold the levers of power, they look to progressive candidates and they look to progressive senators and, and representatives as a, 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 a genuine threat to the established order. Because the Democratic Party does not want to make the actual progressive changes that they campaign on. So they love when there's a bottleneck. And Dianne Feinstein's, uh, you know, uh, uh, <laughs> Diane Feinstein's mental faculties not being in order and her inability to actually do the job that she was elected for is actually not that bad of a thing for the Democratic Party because they can always point to her and go, oh, fuck, we really wanted to do this thing, but we can't start an investigation. Diane Feinstein's not there. You think so? I think that plays a role, yes. I think that, because it's not an accident that every election cycle, they're like, oh, we need a majority. We need a majority in the Senate. We need a majority in the representative, House of Representatives. Uh, you know, we need to win. And then immediately they create bottlenecks for themselves uh, that that stand in the way of uh, progressive legislation that they promise, like $15 minimum wage was a was a promise, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Increasing minimum wage at the federal level to $15 was a promise uh, that was not fulfilled. Why wasn't it fulfilled? Because they pointed to the Senate parliamentarian claiming that uh, it, increasing the minimum wage to fifteen dollars would not actually fit under the jurisdiction of a a budget reconciliation bill, which it absolutely would, for the record. Mm. But the Senate parliamentarian claimed that it would not work. You could not put that in, and the Democratic Party just basically threw their hands at the side and went, "Oh shit, we can't do that." Not the parliamentarian. Not the Senate that parliamentarian. That thing that we all know what it is. And, and the Senate care parliamentarian about. is a historically appointed position, <laughs> and actually, the Senate parliamentarian has been removed in the past by Republicans under the Bush administration. Mm. Anytime a Senate parliamentarian says no, you have uh, well within your power to actually remove them from power and appoint someone who will play ball with you. That is, of course, if you genuinely care about following through on your agenda, which the Democrats don't. So Dianne Feinstein's ineptitude here, her, her medical inability to, to you know, do the job, is actually not a burden. It's a burden to you if you are a, a you know, doughy-eyed uh, believer that, in the Democratic how that Party. I helps them to be ineffective. What do you mean? It, it helps the Democratic Party a, to be ineffective. You want to know why? Because they, they love promise, being... That they're going to do something and then they don't get it done. I okay. Mean, not, it's not going to help any of them. No, let me explain. The Democratic Party loves winning seats, but also still losing power somehow. Why? Because the Democratic Party, just like the Republican <laughs> Party, are beholden to the same corporate interests. Those are the guys who are greasing their wheels. The same corporations and the same wealthy people are the people that are giving them money, just like they're giving the Republican Party money. The Republican Party also, on the other hand, can play a culture war issue uh, uh, focused uh, policy uh, uh, policy strategy and win votes. The Democratic Party, on the other hand, has to put on uh, economic progress as like one of their key agenda items, right? Mm. But they don't actually want to follow through on that because every single thing that they would do, whether it be increasing the minimum wage of fifteen dollars or abolishing all student loan debt, for example, would hurt a lot of their real benefactors, their real constituents that they care about corporations and the mega wealthy so they have to constantly and it's not an accident if you've been following politics as long as i have you've been covering this for as long as i have after like the 10th cycle of oh shit we really can't do this again because so joe lieberman is standing in the uh you know way of progress under the obama administration when we have a supermajority in the senate or Oh shit, Joe Manchin and Kirsten Cinema are standing in the way of progress and we can't actually get all of our uh, you know policy items on to a bill that we should be able to effectively spear dick through Congress. Uh, 
you realize that they're doing that per on purpose. They're mm. doing that because it is by design. They do not want well, uh, legitimate up, material change to happen because that would undermine profit margins. Sorry, it's been a while since I've been well, here, Nan so I'm Nan just Nan fucking Nan talking. Nan <laughs> well, it's no, you're interesting, good. and it's sad. Nancy Pelosi, is, I mean, again, she, her insider trading with her husband is so blatant, mm -hmm. it actually makes me want to puke. He's like the most successful trader of all time. Uh, but anyway, here she is. We, didn't, we never even got to her saying. For 20 years, I have been the leader or the speaker of the House fighting for California, and I have seen up close and firsthand her great leadership. Oh. Have you seen up close and firsthand how, her, demented, her demented mind? Okay. Here's what I got. Wait, for hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's finish the video. Okay. Yeah. For I'm all positive. Country, but especially for our state of California. Uh, she deserves the respect to to get well and be back. Uh, Suck my on fucking duty cock. And, uh, Fuck uh, you. I mean, she could get well by retiring. You fucking monster, you donkey. Shut up, you most fucking animal. <laughs> I mean, most people taking the time to get well is like, you know. Retiring. I mean, at that age, yes. Say, enjoy the, the fruits of life. Get the uh, fuck uh, out of here. Uh, uh, he, he is there his back. No, she fucking doesn't. <laughs> no, she doesn't. Leave Japan. I hate you. You're not. You do not deserve the the wonderful public oh, transit Japan. experience that Japan <laughs> offers to every single person. Until we get the high speed okay, rail in on. California. I'm, I'm waiting for the. She's about to drop and, the bomb. Uh, She's dropping the bomb right now. It's, it's, it's interesting to me. I don't know what political agendas are at work that are going after Senator Feinstein in that way. I've never seen them go after a man who was sick. That's not true. They did this to Breyer. <laughs> they did this to Breyer. We literally did this to Breyer. Breyer retire. You're and it worked. Look at her face, And it man. fucking worked. Look okay. at this fucking face. Here's what I got to say. <laughs> you want Feinstein to be in the Senate? Great. Okay, you fucking advocate that in public. You have to let her drive you to fucking Congress every morning. Oh, you stupid fuck. Oh, I love Do that it. deal. Yeah. You think she has the mental faculties? Do drive it. her, drive the car to Congress. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> let her drive you to fucking Congress. Absolutely. She's not fit to serve soup at a soup kitchen. I mean, she can't do, she probably can't even dress herself. Let's be real. I don't think this woman dresses herself. No, she's done. She's over. It's literally a shell, okay? It's the fucking, the, you know, the lights on in the attic, but nobody's uh, home or whatever they say. Yeah, okay. Thank you uh, to uh, Nancy Pelosi, who's a vile piece of crap, and also... Demon, dude. Yo, yeah. it's so funny that, like, people that you would not... Oh, wait. People that you would not trust to, to man a fucking vehicle that you're inside of for understandable reasons... Are, are still trustworthy somehow to man the fucking country. Man and, the it, and it goes to show you, like, it, it it's true. Like, they don't really care who is in that seat. It's just an ass in a seat, okay? And the irony is, there are plenty of fucking old-ass senators, old-ass representatives who should retire but won't. But ultimately, at least they can sit on that seat and vote. Dianne Feinstein can't even fucking do that when there's a yeah. narrow, there is a, a slim majority in the, in the Senate. There is an interesting wrinkle in this. Uh, Nancy, uh, Diane's primary caregiver is Nancy Pelosi's daughter. Yeah, this, uh, this is from an article that just came out this morning. Oh my god. Yeah. That mm -hmm. makes so much sense. Okay, uh, here yeah, it says- uh, Holy uh, fuck, what a bombshell. I well, mean, pee real well, hold, let me read this, and then you can go pee. Alright, he's running. <laughs> I can't get through a single guy. <laughs> uh, you can't hear me. This is- this is important, Hassan. You need to be here for this. What do you here, mean I'll, you'll figure it out? I'll, I'll, read, I'll read the donos in the meantime. We got a bunch. Uh, somebody said they just spent $500 on the new Teddy Fresh drop. <laughs> Damn. Oh, shit. I forgot to... Let's Shout out that. Colton. Yeah, here. We'll use this <coughs> um, as a short commercial break. Excuse me. Oh, God damn it. 500! <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. The new Classics Collection just dropped uh, this morning at 10 a.m. Is it not loading? Or is that our internet or is the website not? No, we... Okay, there it goes. Yeah, so here it is. I'm wearing the crew neck right now. I'm, I'm wearing one wearing of the hoodies right now. I am as well. So I'm going to be showing the you little, guys. Got the little ears. The bear ear uh, hoodie. We got fuzzy beanies, hoodies. The women's classic fleece shorts are coming soon. Oh, that's hot. Classic dad hat, 20 bucks. That's women's shrunken tee, 20 bucks. The women's uh, zip up and uh, pants are coming soon. Classic hoodie, 60 bucks. You know, it's so, so right nice. Now. I'm telling you, you get your hands on one of these things. 
so hot right now. We said they spent two thousand. That's got to be cash. Two thousand. Two thousand. Uh, uh, Come on. Can you even spend that much if you buy everything? <laughs> two thousand. I said I spent two thousand. Duel me. Holy fuck, dude. I get it. You message Luke and see if he can see if someone actually spent two thousand. Oh, we're gonna call you out. We're gonna call Thank you, you out. Luke. I'm not gonna dox you. I just want to know if that actually happened. <laughs> Luke. The classic zip-up hoodie, which is iconic. I think the zip-up hoodie is coming back in a big way. Slim-fitting sweatpants. We got socks. We got the bare ear hoodie. Mm. I mean, this is usually $95 when we do it, like, in the regular way. It's $86. Wow. Socks. The classic pocket tee, somebody's asking yesterday, 22 bucks, man. Classic beanie, 20 bucks. We got the ear zip-up. We also have a long-sleeve, uh... Pocket T Polo, 25 bucks. Are you crazy? Classic T, 20 mind? bucks, man. It's crazy. The deals are insane. I'm, I'm just so proud of this collection we put together. I'm so happy. Wow, you it. would look at this while I'm gone, so I can't fucking order everything. I see how it is. I see what's going on here. <laughs> and the Classic Crew, which is 55. I'm so happy. We're going to be adding more colors, more silhouettes, but the Classics is here to stay. And uh, thank Crew. you guys for trying it. You're gonna love it. You want to pick some stuff? I mean, it's just it's really we're, we made like a classics collection. Yeah, really I nice. See it. I like Crew. it. We, I mean, it's all. I like. You know what I like? <laughs> I like that the those shorts, the women's. Oh God, they're women's shorts. We have shorts. They're short. The women's shorts are short. Here, this one. No, but that's not short. That's long. You want it shorter than that? Yeah. I guess we can make short shorts for Yo, you. Yo, I'm trying to show these quads, man. I've been fucking hard. working hard. You, you know can, what I mean? It's I mean, the summer. You can hike them up to like have, have these your belly bad button. boys fucking pop Pull off. Out. I want the socks though, for sure. I want all the socks. There's a uh, tube socks and oh, I guess there's three, uh, two packs of tube socks. I want both Dark of those packs. Okay. All right, someone writing for that sure. down. Yeah, thank you. The tube socks for Hassan. All right. Well, I'm there back. We thank can, you. We can okay, do it so. Now. <laughs> TeddyFresh.com, thank you. TeddyFresh.com. TeddyFresh.com. You know the guy, Love? Yeah, I can confirm that he spent that much on oh, the previous go. draw. What the hell? So high. He's a massive. Who are you? Sure. Oh, here's Di here's Diane, Diane Feinstein. She's so trusted. She operates heavy machinery. Wait, is that is that what happened to Jeff? I thought David was <laughs> oh, behind no, the that explains. No. Oh, oh, man. Fuck. No wonder. Yeah. No, she's cool, man. She she's she's all good. Don't worry okay. about it. I trust her to operate that. <laughs> Me too. Okay. So about uh so her primary caregiver is Nancy Pelosi's daughter. Okay. Nancy, mm -hmm. wait, her her daughter's name is Nancy too? Sure is. Arrogant. A little bit. She's Nancy the second? Mm-hmm. Maybe even the third. I don't know. Nancy Pelosi named her own daughter Nancy? That's kind of psychotic. Nancy Pelosi's daughter Nancy famously Karine once said... Rauda. Nancy Pelosi's daughter is like famous for saying some of y'all's faves are about to be implicated. <laughs> that was, uh, with that was a different daughter, but yes, uh, I know what you're talking about. Uh, with uh, So let me, let me read this. By all accounts, the arrangement is rooted in a long and friendly relationship between Feinstein and Pelosi, but among some of those who are aware, it also raised uncomfortable questions about whether Nancy Pelosi's political interests are in conflict with Feinstein's personal interests. The intrigue surrounds the future of Feinstein's seat. Pelosi has endorsed Rep. Uh, Adam Schiff, her longtime protege and former hand-picked House Intelligence Committee chair, to, su to uh, su succeed Feinstein after her sixth and final term ends next year. Schiff is a household name in California and already has a $50 million campaign cash advance. Uh, over his next competitor. But if Feinstein were to bow out now and retire, Schiff's advantage would disappear. Governor Gavin Newsom has pledged to appoint a black woman to serve out her term, and one of Schiff's declared opponents, Barbara Lee, yep. would foot that bill. That explains it. Scum yeah. fuck of Which the Which is earth. weird because Gavin Newsom is like a party man, right? Um, mm -hmm. He is, a, he is a, <laughs> a, a an institutional Democrat, so... It's rather odd, but I guess he made that pledge already. He made already. the promise. Well, first of all, I, <clears throat> I personally fucking despise when Democrats say that because it's like Barbara Lee would be fine in that position on her own. She has the bona fides. Do, you don't need to be like, oh, I'm appointing a black woman. I, there. I agree. It's the same with like Katanji Brown Jackson. I found that very odd. Yeah, it's it's so weird. Well, like, it's like, well, you're taking the dub away from her too because it's like, let's just yeah. pick the best person yeah. who happens to be black. Yeah, it's like there are plenty of qualified uh, black women black. in that to to be. Uh, well, hold on. What about um, 
Andrew what? Cuomo. I am black. <laughs> oh, I hear he's available, actually. Oh, no. <laughs> he's a black woman, I heard. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's gay, Jewish. too, and a Muslim. I am a Muslim. <laughs> I am disabled. Right. I am gay. <laughs> oh, he's, yeah. So he he's, hits a lot of the boxes. <laughs> yeah. That explains, so her own selfish desire to serve her protege, this has got to be it. This has to be it. I know. The whole time we've been wondering, and then I just this morning saw that this article came out, and all of a sudden it, it's all clicked. That's fucking... And... That's so gross. A lot of people thought it was interesting that Ro Khanna uh, was one of the only people that were calling for her to resign. Ro Khanna is Barbara Lee's uh, campaign chair. Yeah, Ro Khanna is an interesting guy. So it, it's, all, it's, all, it's all maneuvering. Dude, it's dude, all... Yeah. It, it is so pathetic the consequence of their stupid fucking game they're literally doing weekend at bernie's like i know that's obvious and funny and haha that's literally what nancy pelosi is doing her daughter is there being her primary caretaker that's this is psychotic this is elder abuse i'm just straight i think it's elder abuse <laughs> a little bit yeah you know I'm uh fallen, by the way thank you I to can't get up <laughs> thank you to a pizza for the massive Gifted subs, thank Yo, you so much. 70. Legend, 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 legend. Thank you so much. And everybody else, Kyle Mark. It's pizza time. Thank you, guys. So, uh, that's the story. You want to do Rudy Giuliani or Elon entering his neo-Nazi era? I can, I can do both. I mean, I don't really care. Whatever we have time for, whatever you want to do. I like both of those stories. Let's start with, I, um, I hope to hit both of them. Let's just... Uh, let's do Elon entering his neo-Nazi era. You're a bunch of pussies. Uh, shut up, Rudy. <laughs> I'll do yours if you want you me to. Not tough let's enough. do Rudy's then. Fuck you, Rudy. You guys are not tough enough. <laughs> yeah, so this one's actually kind of fast. Uh, shut up, Rudy. <laughs> excuse the expression. Rudy, I will not be excusing the expression. No, yeah. Fuck yeah. that. <gasps> Rudy, it's a sexual dance. You'd be so rude, Rudy. Rudy, give, stop. I have Rudy, a message Gi for you, Rudy. <clears throat> Rudy Giuliani's former aide, Noella... Dumphy <clears throat> is suing him for sexual harassment while she worked for him between 2019 and two, 20, uh, 2020. The shit in this complaint is pretty inflammatory. Disgusting. The 70-page yep. suit claims among uh, that he made her work naked, he made her perform oral sex, he drank all day and night, made ra racist remarks, sexist remarks, made anti-Semitic anti marks, didn't pay his bills. Here's the one... That is really uh, fucking interesting. It claims that Rudy said that him and Trump were were selling pardons for $2 million a pop. Yeah. You know what's really interesting about this story? And I'll say one more thing. What? She has apparently a ton of recordings and receipts. Yeah. This isn't just yeah. this isn't just her saying this shit. She's she has receipts on this shit. The the sale of the pardon side of this story, like the, the sexual assault, sexual harassment that was like rampant, is uh pretty pretty basic, like very commonplace in Republican circles, in politics in general. Uh it's inexcusable, it's gross. But what's actually uh a, a little bit different uh is the the uh the pardon sale scheme that uh, Rudy Giuliani allegedly was engaged in. Now, what I find interesting about that is that this is not the first time that this has ever been mentioned. As right. a matter of fact, there was a, there was a CIA whistleblower under the Obama administration that, uh, that, was, you know, that went to jail for two years, uh, and, and he was one of the people that um, originally went to Rudy Giuliani and uh, hired a Republican lobbyist and went to Rudy Giuliani uh, to potentially get a pardon from Donald Trump. And um, he, this experience was actually uh, uh, covered in the New York Times two years ago. Mm. So what I find really interesting about it is that like, there has already been stuff out there. Yeah. And they never really investigated it any further, I which I find very it's odd. It's stunning because it would be so easy to tell if this happened. You could easily follow, the, you can look at who was pardoned yeah. and follow the money and follow the connections of each one and find out why each one was pardoned. You could fucking easily investigate this and find out. Well, there this could happened. also have been an attempt potentially and not necessarily follow through on it. So that, that's something to also keep in mind. Um, so, and it's still uh, uh, an attempt to, uh, an attempt to do this is still illegal. Uh, so this was yeah, alleged. Yeah. 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 Uh, the CIA whistleblower, uh, 
linked up with them, met up with them, had a conversation. Wow. Uh, oh, he said the two million number too. Yeah. Yep. So they somehow knew the same exact number. That is interesting. Well, this was publicly known, so you yeah, know, you could maybe argue that she was just referencing this. Okay. Well, she has receipts. I mean, I believe her. So yeah. I, I don't know what if she has receipts on this one. But that's the argument they will probably make. Yeah. So. The the only new component of this story that she's alleging is that there was a there was a scheme to uh, divide the fee 50 50 one million for Trump one million for Rudy that's actually new information and uh, that's the new thing that they're alleging pretty generous cut for Rudy uh, yeah well he's the one who's facilitating it well technically according to the CIA whistleblower he went to lunch with yeah. Rudy yeah and he said okay so let's talk about this pardon and Rudy immediately got up and left the table. And then his uh, aide that was at the table was like, oh. you talk to me about this stuff. Mafioso shit. Yeah. Racketeering. Which is weird. Like, you're a prosecutor. How do you fucking not know that, like, Rudy Giuliani is most notorious for fucking using RICO charges as a prosecutor in he New York for right. the fucking mayor against the mob. Right. But you know that that doesn't fucking absolve you, you fucking idiot. Although he guess he know. well, he's not very bright, is he? You think the Trump mob. is regretting this uh, Giuliani uh, association yet? Uh, no, I don't think so because Trump, you think has, besties, Trump has so? always uh, surrounded himself with people exactly like Rudy Giuliani. Just like, <laughs> not people necessarily that he has hired because they're the best at their job, but people he knows will also con at his behest. Well, so this, this uh, secretary was apparently hired, according to her, for off-the-book sexual favors. He owes her apparently like uh, two million dollars that he never paid her. He was paying her a million dollar a year salary. Um, he paid disgusting. her a lot more for fucking sucking him off, <laughs> bro. Yeah, I tell you, amount of money on the planet, I don't think. Yeah, that, no. That anyone could be paid to suck Rudy Giuliani's disgusting cock. It's right. a sexual. Dance. Among the things that she apparently has recorded, potentially allegedly, is him saying. Black guys hit women more than anyone else. So do Hispanic guys. It's in their culture. <laughs> as he as he forced this woman to suck his dick. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Dumfrey claimed that Giuliani mocked Jews over Passover. Jews just want to go through their freaking Passover all the time. Man, oh man, get over the Passover. <laughs> it was like three thousand years ago. The Red Sea parted. <laughs> Big deal. That's not the first. That's kind of a good bit. I mean, you, to be honest, when you're well, because you're you're a New Yorker. When you're a New Yorker, you got. I feel like that's the type of thing like a, a Jewish comedian would say. I agree. You know it's what a good I mean? Bit. And it's same with like Donald Trump. Like he has like that sassy. Mm. You know, he he has that sassy George Costanza energy sometimes. Like this, I feel like is similar to that. Well, then uh, he also said allegedly that Jews' penises are inferior due to natural selection. I'm not. I'm like. I'm not sure what that even means. <laughs> okay, that. Okay, that's not very Larry David. I, I don't. I don't know what the fuck that even means. That's just weird, man. What natural the fuck? Election. Yeah. Uh, she claims Rudy knew that the 2020 election was a fraud and intentionally lied about it. Oh, wow, surprise. She uh, continued to perform the work. Claimed that Giuliani callously tossed her aside, never paid her, and left her traumatized by the abuse she had suffered. Uh, fantastic. Uh, what a guy, huh? So, okay, that's Giuliani, uh, the most vile, disgusting person probably to ever walk this earth, the penguin. He's one of them. And when he ejaculates, it's not semen, it's just tonsil stones. Oh, God. Enough with the tonsils. I just can't, I, I can't <laughs> get the image of Rudy Giuliani's disgusting hair dye. Dude, like that's what I was leaking. Picturing. Every time I think that's about Rudy Giuliani, I think of that. He's sweating while you know, getting it, a BJ. Here's a, here's a fun, here's a fun little thing uh, from the court proceedings, like from the court documents. They actually pointed to the Sasha Baron Cohen, yeah, uh, Borat subsequent movie, film, yeah, uh, scene where Rudy Giuliani knowingly tries to have sexual intercourse, yes. with a with a minor, spot on, on yeah. camera, not knowing that there's a camera there, obviously. He so they actually pointed to that and said, this is exactly what he did to me. 100%, man. Yeah. Uh, and so he his touches move. his dick. <clears throat> no, no, no. He was adjusting his pants. Oh, excuse me. Excuse yeah. Me. Yeah, yeah. That's what he was doing. That's how you adjust your pants. <laughs> yeah, I was taking my, my dick out and then... I never understood that because it, even if that was true, here, here, here. he still went to a hotel room with the minor, right? Like, like that part is indisputable. Just to talk shop, though. Well, they were doing an interview. 
See? Uh-huh. Yeah, it's so funny. And, well, they were going to do was an interview. Was she underage? Interview I don't ended. remember. In the movie, she was meant to be underage? I yeah. think in the movie she was. In real life, no, the I, actress wasn't underage. Was she? I, I didn't know that. I think she was supposed to be 15. Yeah, no, she's she 24 says, in real she life. Says, she's supposed to be 15? Yeah, she says Holy fuck. multiple times that she's underage. Yeah. And Rudy Giuliani is aware of it in the scene. <laughs> What's insane to me is that um he is the biggest idiot in the world, man. <laughs> like this is this is literally EDP shit. You know what I mean? This is like yeah. Chris Hansen. Like whenever whenever like a pedophile gets caught, right, on camera and Chris Hansen comes over like, "Why don't you take a seat?" Like they're always like, "Oh, I was just here adjusting my pants." <sighs> How does that work for Rudy? When it doesn't work for like right every other fucking uh, pedophile uh, schmo that has tried to do the same thing. I was just getting a cupcake. What was on the agenda tonight? Oh, this classic. Is awesome. Such a classic fucking bit to, to be like, oh, I was just here for cupcakes, this actually. Is just the saddest <laughs> looking situation. I mean, what the <laughs> fuck, bro? <laughs> <laughs> that would be the saddest fucking blowjob that ever took place on this earth. His, image, His flaccid penis, like oh, you know God. he can't get it up. Oh no, you oh. know he's got and some Viagra. Stinks. You know, oh, you dude, know. Viagra's not can't help Actually, him. that's alleged in the in his dick the lo- No, that he he's like a serial. He's popping oh. Viagra like all day every day. Yeah, like, that's right. And he would talk about how like <laughs> oh we gotta do something about my boner. <laughs> Like no, he said shit like that. Not. It's so gross. So he's he really always a penguin. So he takes Viagra like a daily supplement. He's just popping them like candy, like fucking breast. Good for my heart, Ethan. <laughs> I'm sure. Come dude. on. All right, let's move. So we might actually have time to hit everything now. Let's do Elon's. Uh, uh. Oh my God. Okay, this is important. <laughs> what Elon Klansman Musk? <laughs> no, no. This. I'll what do you think of this? I don't know. Ah! I don't know what it means, but it means something. This is okay. You got, this is these are horrors beyond human uh, imagination. I never, I never thought. Take it in, brother. Wow. Feel it. Horrific. The conservative movement is popping, man. These are some of your heroes, guys. Good job. You're fucking doing it. Um. So okay, Elon's in his Nazi. So. Elon Musk has pretty much gone full mask off this week. Uh, it's been pretty heavy duty. Very, and, and to be honest, quite disturbing that the richest, one of the most powerful people in the world is just actually like a white supremacist. Um, well, a lot of them are. So, you know, <laughs> I guess it's... Uh, I prefer the, the, to the main think- difference is that he's like... He's not like an old guy racist. He's like a internet groiper racist. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Uh, well, which is that's, which is way more annoying. That's worse. Yeah, because old people are just like dumb and ignorant racist. Yeah, groipers are like we hate Jews because yeah. we are just we're just like Nazis. Yeah, and, oh, Jews. and and obviously there's like a couple steps in between those, and and it is significant uh, where you stand ideologically because like it also means like. You know, it, it, it's it's a path for rehabilitation, and I feel like when you get to the Elon Musk point, it's just like I don't think. I mean, he's so narcissistic, surrounded himself with yes men and sycophants and a, a legion of like sycophant stands that are some of the dumbest people on the planet that are also like financially invested in his success as well because they have like Tesla stock and shit. So, or at least they think that they're financially in- invested in his success. So, so it, it's impossible to turn him around on this stuff. Well, he is let, also so horny. Mm-hmm. Like the redheaded, he wants to fuck this uh, lady so bad, dude. The redheaded libertarian. He is her. He is her reply guy. He is her most. Oh my god! Loyal. I have to tell you something. I'm not going to say who told me this, but somebody I know told me that. Actually, I know she. She showed me the receipts. He was Trying hitting her up in the DMs. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, you gotta tell me off camera. Dude, it was fucking juicy Hi. gossip. She, I promise not to say anything, but like, holy fuck, it is very embarrassing for him. Yeah, no, he is, but he's like openly posted about how he hasn't like fucked in years or whatever. Or like, or not fucked in years, but he was like, oh God, I haven't had sex in so long. Like, he posted that shit when he was like 47. Yeah, but that's not really probably true, is it? I mean, I don't know, but like, right. it's it's a wild thing to post. You're not like a fucking teenager uh, with with no following online. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, that's weird that you're horny posting like that. All right. So what happened? Let's do the timeline. So it first started here during the uh, first Allen- started during Allen, Texas. Yeah. And the, the shooting in Allen, Texas, where a white supremacist, a Hispanic white supremacist, uh, went to a mall, 
and shot a bunch of people. Um, and and uh, the conservative movement, instead of doing the usual thoughts and prayers song and dance that they do, or the whole, like, we're distancing ourselves away from this white supremacist uh, shooter song and dance that they do, they decided to rush to something that I haven't really seen in a situation like this before. I've seen it in school shootings, but never seen it in, like, an out-and-about mass shooting of a white supremacist. Because it was so such a slam dunk, like, obvious. Like, this guy, he's, like, watching Tim Pool. He's watching all these people. It's in his... It, but the man has swastikas tattooed on his body. Yeah. And so they go, this is so, such a slam dunk. It's so obvious we can't escape it. Therefore, it's a psyop. So the uh, redheaded librarian, uh, whoever the fuck that is, this sounds like a psyop. An employee of state-funded media told us a Jewish lady and a Korean guy radicalized a Mexican neo-Nazi gang member. <laughs> Korean guy is Tim Pool, by the way. <clears throat> he is. He's half Korean. Serious? Yeah, Tim Pool's half Korean. Uh, I He's just, the Korean guy? It shocked me for a second, and the Jewish lady is uh, lives at TikTok. Holy fuck. Yeah, lives like at TikTok is an Orthodox Jew. I don't know if you knew that. He's Orthodox? Oh, yeah. you didn't know this? Ugh. She's a... Uh, that explains it, why she's such a vile fruit. Is that, is that, the, is that the term? Uh, is it Chabad? Uh, Chabad, yeah. I yeah. Don't know. Yeah, but yeah, no, she is. She is a, a uh, piece of shit. Yeah, she's a gross ass. You didn't know that? I only fuck with reform. I only fuck with uh, reformed Jews. I'm not down with all that. Wow, crazy fucked ass. up. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I'm straight up anti-Semitic when it comes um, to anyone who's not. Oh God, don't say that. Don't say that. <laughs> They're gonna use that against you. What the fuck? Like, like I'm not, not a real I'm Jew. Not, I'm not supporting. You can literally but... say like bad Jews exist. Bad Jews. Bad Jews. Bad Jews. I, all day, I always day. say I'm you a bad Jew. You fucking say that. You say that one I'm a time. Bad... They're gonna use that Listen, against you. I'm a bad Jew. I don't want to be. Everybody says stop telling me a Jew. Everybody hates. You know how much anti-Semitic comments I get. I says, dude, I don't care. I'm not. I don't want to have. I'm not. I don't claim this shit. <laughs> Just fucking leave me alone. <laughs> You're you know? self-hating Jew. I'm not self-hating at all. Uh, well, maybe a little bit, but not because of the Jewish people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> no. yeah uh, well, that's what Ben would say about you anyway. Um, so uh, so anyway, so... Oh, Radicalize a Mexican neo-Nazi. That's amazing. Neo -Nazi. The Tim Pool's Korean guy. Yeah, and, and uh, yeah, first of all, nobody knows Libs of TikTok, <clears throat> including yourself, did not know that Libs of TikTok is a, is a Jewish lady, first of all. So, no. I know that because I'm a fucking freak, but... Uh, you didn't even know that, and you follow Lives of TikTok. You're a big fan. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we have a lot in common. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> radicalized a Mexican neo-Nazi gang member, okay? Uh, at, according to a recent diary that appeared on a Russian social media site, which wasn't even recent, he's been documenting it as a diary on this Russian website to avoid scrutiny, most likely, to, like, have, uh, you know, to have something like a manifesto basically... Uh, uh, untouched. Also, y'all simp for Russians and like their culture, the way that like gay people don't exist in Russia. Quote, yeah, quote. The, the Russian social media site also is like very popular. It's ridiculous that they're saying it's obscure. It's obscure to you, but it's not an obscure website. Anyway, that happened to have receipts of the gun used and yeah. the pictures of Nazis pulled off Reddit and the internet, even though he doesn't speak Russian. Wait, where are you reading that? I'm s right there. Oh, here, here. Go ahead. Yeah. Keep going, keep going. So, he posted everything on there, how he was going to do it, why he was going to do it, how he got radicalized day by day. He visited the site. He visited the mall a week before the shooting, took photos. And um, you don't need to speak Russian to post on that website. And yes, he would routinely post like mood board shit, like a Pinterest of, you know, eclectic, esoteric Hispanic Nazis, as a matter of fact, which do exist. There are plenty of Nazis in Latin American countries. If you didn't know that, well, welcome to the real world. They do exist. He was posting photos of them and saying, these are my people. These are my people. Um, he did this over a course of like a very long time, too. It's not like you can fake that shit. You know what I mean? Unless they were like, I guess, setting up a fucking psyop and posting this dude's like private information that they somehow had access to, including photos from his phone that they posted, like, a months in advance on this Russian website. He has okay. swastikas on, tattooed all over his fucking they, body. They also, like, sw yeah, they also got him a swastika tattoo. They tattooed him with a swastika, I guess, to do the PSYOP. And then, uh, you know, he went and he shot people at this mall. <clears throat> so this take is obviously insanely stupid. 
But hold on, it gets signal boosted by Elon Musk, the owner of the website. Uh, didn't the story come from Belling uh, Cat? Yeah, Belling Cat. Which liter literally specializes in psychological operations. I don't want to hurt their feelings, but this is either the weirdest story ever or a very bad psyop. It's not that weird of a story. In fact, a neo-Nazi shot people? It's archetypal, it seems really. It's pretty straightforward, actually. Yeah, it's actually. pretty far for the course there. Yeah. So why is he... Like, this is psychotic, to be signal boosting that this mass shooter who is a... He, this man, he's like, I'm a white supremacist. Please, everybody, I want you to know I'm a Nazi. And they're like, mm-mm. Okay. He's like, please, to, I'm doing this something. for you guys. They're like, uh-uh. I need to mention something here. First and foremost, I'm going to defend Elon Musk. I'm going to do it for two reasons. Number one, your honor, he was really horny. Mm. You think okay? he just wanted to fuck? He had him, yeah, you know, that redheaded libertarian got him acting strange, okay, on the timeline. He, he is such a fucking pathetic little sweaty reply guy. Like, he replies to huh. everything that she posts. He first does. Of all. I'm not familiar with her. It, I, I don't know anything about her either, but every time he fucking replies to her, it's like all over your, your For You page. The red oh, head. The website is just for see, Elon see. Musk. So, yeah. so that's number one. Number one, your honor, he's very horny. Okay? Mm. Number two, he's not wrong. Bellingcat is a CIA-backed uh, uh, operation. That is true. That does not mean that everything that Bellingcat does... Uh, is uh, at the behest of the CIA or a uh, psychological operation. Uh, Bell and Cat also does have some, you know, great reporters, great journalists. They are an open source intelligence uh, uh, investigative team. They the did most the part. sole reporting on this, though. What? They did the sole reporting on this. No. Yeah, it's it's, it's not them. Stupid. Also. They were just the ones that dug up that social media. Yeah. Okay. No, the New York okay. Times is the one who originally broke it. Which, by the way. Uh, Again, you could make the same argument about the New York Times. They work hand in hand with the State Department and intelligence communities. Let's be fucking real. Um, but the New York Times originally said that this dude had like they they found the they found his account. Uh, but guess what? Like the cops also said as soon as they saw this dude that maybe there was uh, possibly a uh, hate crime motive here. And cops are notorious for never jumping the gun in that regard. Right. Par you know, partially because, like, they are also racist themselves as an institution <clears throat> and individually. So when you have cops go, yeah, this might be a hate crime, that's how you know. That's how you know that it very likely is a fucking hate crime. Uh, Ian Miles Chung, who, uh, if you know him, you know what he's about. The alleged shooter's alleged uh, profile claims that he was inspired by libs of TikTok between this and Tim Pool references... This thing is sus suspect. Where is his Twitter account? Why was he using Russian social media site to write and essentially a diary to zero followers? Redheaded librarian says it's a psyop and it's not even good. And then Elon, of course, like you said, I do think he he's horny posting. You're right. Then he goes, it gets weirder by the moment. It's the same. It First hasn't all, gotten weirder. If, this is, a, if this is a psyop, it's not even good. It's so stupid because if this is a psyop, it's literally the best psyop ever. That means that anyone and everyone could technically completely be like robbed of their own genuine identity and be turned into like a white supremacist mass shooter because this guy was so genuinely that right that it's impossible to like fake this media profile especially because the the russian website that they're referencing had a username that linked back to the fucking mass shooter and his youtube which we also looked through which uh, actually had a face reveal and it was his fucking face and it wasn't like recent either you know what i mean so how the so fuck did they do this it was just like a year long two year long operation this gets weirder by the moment dude yeah so what is wild about this is also what is the purpose of this psyop <clears throat> is it to what tell us that fucking white supremacists are bad you really need a fucking psyop to know that do you think the the federal government <laughs> the the intelligence communities are like guys we got to do something about this. No, Nazi the psyop is it's like an anti-Semitic thing where it's like they're just, the Jews are trying to drum up sympathy. I, I don't know. No, psyop is a real thing that the military engaged. I know, but their their theory behind it seems anti-Semitic. I don't think they're like about saying the Jews are specifically. doing yeah, this psyop. I mean, it, is that not what we're talking about? Or or like, or like, 
I mean, the one that they always do is like they're doing these mass shootings to take away our guns. Yeah, that's, but like, that, they, there's they, not even a push to do that, and it doesn't that's happen the thing, it, ever. It doesn't, it doesn't work. happen ever. You'd think literally, give up. <laughs> literally, literally, hordes of children being gunned plus. down in their schools. Two hundred plus and, mass and, shootings. You know, it's not I mean, happening. It's not Shut happening. the fuck up. Yeah, like it's not right. happening. Yeah, yeah. Well, what a psyop, dude. <laughs> yeah, they just keep failing, I guess, because Americans are so good at uh, avoiding psyops. Uh, Tim Pool, who was a favorite of the mass uh, shooter uh, on uh, the realization has this incredible reflective moment. Yeah, so he, wait, this pause it for a second. Before we get started, Tim Pool originally was like, this is a PSYOP, this is a PSYOP. And then he, when faced with the reality, they're like, oh no, like this guy's like literally fucking watching a bunch of his videos and stuff. It was like in his favorites on mm -hmm. his YouTube page mm -hmm. from a long fucking time ago. This is his realization, which makes it even funnier because like he... <laughs> He, he no longer even deflects so, at this point. Here's Tim Pool on deep reflections. The tragic story coming out of uh, Texas, a mass shooting. <clears throat> and leftist researchers in the corporate press are running with this story that they've discovered the profile of this individual. And lo, this Mexican man is actually a white supremacist. Why do they say that like that matters? Like, it's, it's, just, they're, it's not that fucking... They just... They assume their audience doesn't realize There's that there are white There's all kinds of people that hate fucking Jews and whatever, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. The two, bar to entry is pretty low. And lots two, of two reasons, white. because it's like a very easy own if you're a fucking dumbass. Like, dumbasses literally go, but yeah, right, a white supremacist Mexican. One, yes, as you correctly pointed out, there are white Mexicans out there. Uh, there are right. plenty of white Hispanics out there. True. Two, doesn't even matter. You could be a fucking brown Mexican person and still be a white supremacist. And there are plenty of those yeah, as a, well. You know, it's a it's a club that they're, they, like I said, the bar is very low. They're accepting members. I think that guy's post, the shooter's post about Libs of TikTok is like illuminating, in my opinion. It's like perfectly representative of how fascist momentum works, right? He doesn't know that she's... Jewish. He doesn't give a. He doesn't even give a fuck. He just likes the transphobia. Mm -hmm. That's why he's like, oh, libs of TikTok. I love you. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? He doesn't care. These guys don't care. They're just in it for the hatred. They're in it for the fucking violence. They're in it for the ethnic cleansing. They're in it for the feelings of superiority in an otherwise like powerless existence that they feel uh, burdened by. Yeah. Why do it's they? It's a sense to like regain control why by do doing they... something so chaotic. Why do they act like there's no white Mexicans? I find that's so bizarre. You're a white Korean. You know what I mean? And you're a white <laughs> supremacist. The fuck are you talking about? Like, like <laughs> yeah. Uh, do you, how do you feel? I, I'd love to ask him how he feels being referenced as a Korean man. Oh, he loves that. Are you kidding me? He loves saying that. He's like, <laughs> oh, I'm Korean. Um, how much Korean I'm is co Tim? I'm Korean. And anti-Asian hate crimes uh, are uh, not real unless we're talking about black people doing them, in which case I will do racial agitation and say it's very real. So much for the tolerant left. You guys are shitting on me, Tim Pool, for being bald. How Korean is this, man? I mean, that doesn't matter. There's no it reason to fucking look at his haplo groups, bro. Like, <laughs> it's, it's fine. Dan it's is just, I think he's half. I think he's half Korean. Half? It could be. Um... Maybe you see on Wikipedia referred to as Korean American. Dude, um, that's 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 the whitest ass looking motherfucker I've yeah, ever seen. Yeah, he's white in my passing, life. just like I'm fucking white passing. You know, I'm white. Right. I'm white. white passing. Fuck. Yeah, he, he is white, just like I'm white. Like he, I would, okay. I would never consider Tim Pool to be anything but white. Individual and lo, this Mexican man is actually a white supremacist. Now the thing is, it seems like researchers have uh, dug through this profile. It does not seem to be real. This person was posting weird things in the past couple of weeks to no followers and to no one. Not but past of course, couple of weeks, for months. Right. For months. With it. In this, there are, uh, on this po profile, there are posts about libs of TikTok, and I believe it's four clips from this show from one particular episode. That was enough. I think he thinks it's cool. People are talking about him that he was watching. He the did. Show. He posted about how, oh, I'm trending again. Like it's great. I think he, his, his he gets a was, kick out of it. I really do. This, this is a psyop to distract away from the trans shooter in in uh, at the at the like school. we. <laughs> I think that the premise is so funny. There's a shooting every day. We don't yeah. need to fake them. Yeah, I know. It's it's so weird. For it's them like the most to common thing in America. Come out and, yeah, now Tim Pool is trending and claim is. that this individual was a fan of this show. Is that yeah, I'm going to come Tim? out uh, outright and just be like, you're liars. That's not the case. You, you, you cannot imagine that he watched your show? 
Like you can't even stretch your uh, imagination that far. Yo, Tim's using the same mic stand as us. Did we like I have revolutionize the, same one too. the podcast? We kind of did. Dude, I we were the same. No, no, they I, owe us. Wait, how long have you guys been using this? Mic? Six years. Oh, never mind. Dude, okay. we Dan was You're Dan had to do like that. deep research to find. Yeah, it, it was like a no, brand new product when I found no, them. No, this everybody is literally the best. The it's the best of the best. But no, every, no, everybody was using these big That's ones right. and was covering our yeah. face. And I was like, "What the fuck?" Just I, you know who I got this from? Who? Uh, Cody and Noel. Because I was, I had the same exact from? issue, and I was like, "Where the fuck did you get these mic stands? They're so sick." Dude, everybody said the H3. We saw the H3 podcast had these, and we were like, "Damn." He did not say that. Yeah, he well, he, he did, thought. Don't have to he be said, shy. I, I made my bare share hands. Private conversation, but he said he, he said us. he invented them. He thanked actually. us. <laughs> you don't get to say someone posted a clip one time and you're a fan because by that metric, Media Matters is our biggest fan. Shout out to Media Matters for being huge fans. Pause it for a second. I got oh, this man. clip from Media Matters. Just so shout out. <laughs> yeah. So here's the difference. Here's the difference. Uh, the shooter's ideology aligns with you. That's the difference. Right. <laughs> he wasn't like, criticizing you. Who's getting but okay. You but <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> you did not button for that. Did you button for that? <laughs> Why the fuck I, not, dude? I'm 100 percent gonna repeat go. what you just did. No, you just no proof that that happened. <laughs> yeah, I will Bash repeat what line. you did right now. Bash no, it didn't, no. it didn't happen. It okay. didn't happen. That was the goofiest button push. <laughs> I never thought that you would <laughs> abuse the button for something as talk? silly as that. You don't know what happened. Hassan said what the N-word. What are you gonna say? You're gonna <laughs> no, he didn't. You what? <laughs> <laughs> no, he did not. Hassan said the N-word. That's crazy. Hit it. Not Hassan, only, not only did you hit the button for the goofiest thing on the planet, the you're just saying that I said a slur now. <laughs> yeah, well, if you, you're trying, I mean, if you want to talk about what really happened, let's just get down to it. <laughs> okay. Well, there was a, there was a. <laughs> what on this? Frame could Ethan have responded to? I think if you did in a way that it's like about. goofy and confusing, that made him look bad. I'm trying to listen before. to the clip. That's <laughs> from perhaps the country show, flag that he got wrong. <laughs> I'm trying to listen to this clip. Perhaps the country flag that he got wrong. Maybe, <laughs> maybe I don't know. <laughs> maybe this guy looks like he's trying to make a really important point. <laughs> Saying that doesn't make Tim at all culpable for what's the behavior that? of that loon. Oh, what's that even like? so, so Yeah, the clips show he wasn't even. You could say what happened. I don't care. It was a joke. I mean, the button. The butt was, part was a joke. Yeah, I just. Yeah. Ethan was like, "Oh, he's got an Italian flag in the background there," <laughs> and then yeah. we were like, "No, that's not Italian," and he immediately slammed the button. Yeah. <laughs> Why not, dude? Let's uh, fucking go, man. Uh, okay, to, be fair, use to be fair, that's excusable, because, you know, I, I, I'm always on board with some Italiophobia. You that's, know what I mean? Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Subscribe to the channel. Wow. Right. Wow. It's like, he's a fan. Like, he wasn't even subscribed. It was it was f oh. uh, four clips from one wasn't show. Subbed. It yeah, wasn't a so real my one. My point is, this is grasping at straws, right? Because even if they can definitively prove, even if, if it turns out that this is legitimate, that really is this. Well, hold on. Was it just one episode he watched, or? Uh, he watched a bunch of different episodes. It was like, I think he had like an interview with like Nick Fuentes and like just pearly things, and he watched a bunch of those. Um, I mean, he watched like they, Abba and, was it Abba and Preach or Abba and Preach? He watched them, Abba and he watched them no, a no, lot. No, no. He watched no, a video no. of, of them shitting on me, actually. No, no, no. Oh. It's Peaches and Cream. Peaches and Cream? Okay, well. Yeah, what do you think of that nickname for Abba and Preach? Peaches, peaches and Cream. Because they're soft. Your honest reaction. I, I have no opinion on those guys because every time I've talked about them, they've cut like so many videos. They're giant pieces of shit. I, yeah. They're assholes and they're. I think they're like. Um, they're, they're peaches like, and cream. They're soft. They can, they can sometimes be like agreeable, but I think that's why it's like kind of insidious where. They're soft. Bro. They'll they'll come across like reasonable at certain points and I'm then sorry. they'll just say something so unhinged. I'm like, what the fuck? No, I'm sorry. Y'all guys get in front of the camera and talk like you're p preaching. Dude, you guys are soft. They take shit out of context to try to like quote unquote dunk. Okay, but all of that aside, just as a nick peaches and cream, cream cuz they're soft, bro. They're like no, a nice really sweet like bowl of oatmeal. Thank you, Hassan. I've been, I don't really I, like it that much. Not well, good. Okay, I think I think it demasculates them and that's why I like it. Uh the other uh, one we have for them I, I don't is know, I don't uh, know too much about them. I just heard like uh uh one of the one of the dudes on there like <laughs> fucking uh, as a own uh gave like 10 grand to the Atlanta Police Department, even though he's like Canadian, which what? is the most cuck thing you can do. Yeah. They're he tried to own like FD Signifier. 
uh, which one show. was it? Uh, the shorter ABBA, one or the taller I one? I don't, I don't know, know the difference. I don't, I don't know. Was it peaches or cream? It's ABBA, I think. <laughs> it's not clear which one's which with I'm peaches kidding. and cream. That's part of the problem. Well, so the other nickname for them we had was uh, Babble and Reach. Way Babble. better, right? What? What was I mean, it? even that's not that good. Oh, come on. Babble and Reach is pretty good. I need to, I need to watch more of their Because content, the, the one too. dude babbles and the other dude reaches. They're all, soft, all I'm gonna say bro. is this. All I'm gonna say is this. I will never, I will never forget when they made like multiple videos about me saying like I'm a fucking dumbass for calling them transphobic potentially because I didn't even say that they were like outright transphobic. I was like, oh, this just seems like transphobic uh, shit. I don't want to watch this video. And then they made like videos on it. <coughs> they did um, the same thing to me, dude. Yeah, they they made videos on it, <coughs> and in the video they subsequently literally said transphobic shit. <laughs> oh. And everyone in the comments was like, yeah, you're right. This guy's such an idiot. You guys aren't transphobic. Fuck trans people. <laughs> um, oh, wait, what is this? They posted this? But mm -hmm. I'm confused. Yeah, they posted that. Oh, they're, oh they so they like it. Wait, no, they're Apple and Peach. Yeah, you didn't say Apple and Peach. No, they're, no you guys okay, got it Apple wrong. Apple actually is like not bad. Yeah, that's it's better, better than, than Peach. No, no, no. Cream. No, it's Peaches not. Cream. <laughs> Peaches and cream is terrible. I'm sorry. They're soft. They're like a sweet bowl of oatmeal. I just, I don't Apple and peach? That's not good it. at all. I don't get that. So they did this. I, they took a clip from my interview with Sebastian, that like dumbass alpha dude, mm -hmm. completely owned. And they took a clip and made it s and titled like Ethan Klein's Embarrassing, where they tried to make it seem like Sebastian owned me. Yeah, they. I was like, what? They, the yeah, no, fuck? they do that. that they do that all the time. Dumb, I'm dude. willing to bet that that video did numbers too. Oh, of course yeah, it did. Yeah, they they do that all the time. They're like, they know that they're like, um, there's a lot of uh, mar there's a market for people that will shit on you. There's a market for people that will shit on me. <laughs> Here's the thing about having kind of content, so they like kind of take advantage of that a little bit. You know, hey, do your thing, man. Make some money. The bad. You know? Here's the it thing. Is what it is. Here's the thing about Abba and Preach that they don't know about me. They they haven't uh, they don't bother me enough yet, but I'll tell you this. I'm fucking insane. And right. if you and if you want to if you want to do the war thing, that's my favorite thing in the world. Uh, and but I'm oh close. God. They're they're just they're they're pathetic. They're liars. They're dishonest. And they're phonies. Mm. They're not even genuine. That's the thing, right? Here, look at this. Here he did a. Uh, Ethan Klein is embarrassing, and then Ethan Klein is mad at us because they're insecure and hate me because I'm fat. I don't know, but yeah, I mean, look, they they're like uh, they're like at the edge of the manosphere, and they make a lot of they used to like own a lot of manosphere guys, but then they also have some like conservative points of view. They've they've cultivated a big brand well, for themselves. They came out. They're they're like not that this is, you know. I mean, you're comparing them to like some of the worst people, but like they're, I guess they're better than Fresh and Fit and stuff for sure. Like, well, like that's, that's when we first debatable. Heard about them. That's no, I'm just saying like they are them. more <laughs> agreeable. Like uh, they are, as far as I know, I so, and they, yeah. their politics might have changed, but it seems like they're like, you know, anti overt white supremacy stuff like that. You know what I mean? They, they do the shit thing on is, that. I feel like they become a gateway. I feel like they, the first time they talked about me was defending Fresh and Fit. Right. It was That's so true. bizarre. This girl called in and was telling us about this horrible date she had with uh, Fit. And then they def and then they make a video saying how like she's a liar and fuck it. I don't I didn't watch it to yeah, be like, I watched like, I watched some of it but it, it was upsetting they're, they're, so I didn't watch they're it. They're centrists, you know. Yeah, yeah, and and we know kind what of. that means. Kind of. Um like I said, I don't know enough about them. I just I have seen like Although, at least so, some of their commentary on like trans issues and it just seemed like a you know cookie cutter uh transphobic shit. Uh and it pops off, you know. There's definitely a market yeah, they get for good it. Views. There's definitely an audience for it. Um I think they they also loved when like uh Gideon uh said that I was uh, implied that I was pandering or I was like oh no, sorry, I was uh patronizing to him. But, you know, it is what it is. Do you. But I'm I'm down. You guys, you know what I mean? Like, I'm looking for my next uh, dragon. You guys aren't a dragon, though. You guys are like a gopher. Right. Your, your okay. channel does well. They, no, their numbers are good. But. Their numbers are really good. They, they, know, they know the algo. They know how to play it. No, their, their channel does really good. It's impressive the numbers they pull, to be I honest. I wish they weren't. Like, but you're, you're right in the way that, like, I see them talking about, like, this just pearly things. Like, they, they yeah. do have, like, takes that I think are... That's why I said I they have you. they have a lot of like yeah. agreeable takes, and then they have like some where it's just like, 
They're, How is this any different than the people that you're shitting on? You they know literally I mean? just throwing a bone to like the people that hate us just because of our politics. Yeah, like it's no, just they're, like, they're, it's low hanging fruit. There's a market for it. Yeah, oh, certainly. And they're they're capitalizing on it. That's what it is. Like it was so it was so disingenuous and like. Uh, that's when I realized, like, that's actually when I changed my policy of, like, uh, trying to genuinely respond to people that would, like, cut videos of me yeah. like that. Yeah. Because, I mean, I wouldn't do it because, I wouldn't do it if it was, like, a small channel anyway, because, like, I'm not trying to, like, uh, you know, boost their audience by giving them some of my fucking haters, right? Because there's always, like, hate watchers in there. Um but uh, they're a they're a pretty big channel. They oh, have yeah. a, they have big. a big following. Wait, so I was like, I'll address some of these takes, Cons and then I did, and then they like literally fucking proved my point while that's, simultaneously that's, saying exactly. that I was wrong. That it, they're one of these people. They operate in bad faith, and they'll just cut it and make a million videos of it, which is fun. But I they operate in good faith enough <laughs> that like they have a lot of. Uh, I'm saying like they come across uh, <coughs> as, as though they are uh, genuinely even keeled on a lot of issues. This is the thing. I used to run into this problem with Keemstar where no matter what I said and did, he would in bad faith just come up over me and say whatever. And I found out the best way to combat that in my case was to talk more. And I'm fucking love that game, dude. <laughs> like I, if you, <laughs> I love it. I, I don't love it. I like you're, it. You're way more combative. I um, It's fun. But the thing is... They're, I just want to believe me alone. <laughs> it, <laughs> they right. probably will just not. Just leave me no. alone. That's what Sebastian, Sebastian said. Hit it. This is their favorite guy who begged That's me. That's what I just, want. I, I want to be, want to be left, left alone. alone. That's their idol, Sebastian, by the way. <laughs> I told them, I was like, why don't you guys watch the whole video and then come tell me how embarrassing I am. Let me think about it. Hold on. Anyway, can someone watch this? He has a video of him with Rolo Tony Brown down. Saying they're coming after us. Is he pro Rolo Tony Brown Town? Can nah. you just preview they're coming after us? I want to see that. <laughs> I would be genuinely shocked if that were the case. They're probably making fun of him. I hope Here's so. That would yeah. be the great. Other, the other part of this is that like a lot of the people that they feature in their commentary are uh oh people that like hold I on just don't you get roasted them. here. If you play Hogwarts Legacy, you're a transphobe. Raiders are afraid. What? what? I, I'm sure they did the classic, like, actually, you know what? I don't know. They might have actually uh, sided with me on this and, like, uh... Hell no. Uh, you think so? Yeah, they, they do it. They, I think, I'm pretty sure they sometimes they will, like, be fair. Hogwarts Let's so see. If you don't know, Hogwarts Here's the most replayed. Created a website where you can see all the streamers who played the game so you can unfollow or target them. I, to call I like that they play Phil at two times speed. That's fucking everything. Yeah. Girl, <laughs> unintended. It was like big names in the space weighing in on he's this. Like fast, don't he's be jealous. He's put me in terms. way more thumbos I recently. I pissed. Yeah, the game's uh, fun to play. I'm gonna play true. the game. Man, of course the homeless guy says this, bro. Like he he's has nothing to lose. He's homeless. <laughs> <laughs> he's stupid. This I'm guy's not, one of the richest creators. I'm not stupid. I don't know this dude. Oh, he got a whole. This is like co he might. Mm. He's smarter than coconuts. I won't put that on him. Whoa. Yeah, no, 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 no. Yeah. No, it's not even. No, no these they guys are they're definitely. They're dude, bright. They uh, seem dude, bright. Dude, they uh, make. They. I don't agree with them ideologically. I don't agree with like a lot of the stuff that they uh, make, uh, especially in regards to like trans stuff or maybe sometimes like the, oh, women are going too far. Like we're against the manosphere, but like sometimes, you know, they're behaving like a uh, weird, uh, you know, that kind of stuff. Uh, they, I think, do uh, way better commentary and and way more interesting uh, commentary than uh, You're Fresh right. and Fit, which You're is right. like literally fucking fourteen year old. Like, oh, you suck if you're a woman. If you speak out against me, fuck you. Like, they're not yeah. losing insecurity in the same way that a lot of those other Manosphere guys are for sure. They're definitely a cut above, and that's why they are have a, a cut above. They're definitely a. They, that's the reason why they have a, a decent. We're a cut panel. above. Why are you doing an Italian accent? Like? We're a cut above. A cut above. Uh, we we take ourselves very seriously, Can peaches and cream. All right. Anyway, hold on. Uh, if you guys want to finish Elon, all right, fuck. We gotta get back. Uh, Wait, we, let me see. We are let me see what they said though. Oh, now you want to see it? Fuck. I want to see. I want to see it too. What do they say about me? Because like the typical Hogwarts conservative Hogwarts. reaction so was like, Hogwarts "Oh, Hassan is such a pussy. Right? He won't no, play this game. fucking game." Which, by the way, I did. I ended up playing it. I that that is the funny part. Is that you I always said it. I would. I just simply here, said, here, here, here. Hassan is a giant hypocrite. Is the title of this chapter. Two. I was wrong. <laughs> Hassan Piker, who's a massive streamer, speaking on this. The only uh -oh. reason why I, I'm not playing this game, and I know a bunch of other people are not playing this game, is because we know that it's not worth it to get 
been bullied endlessly and called transphobic endlessly in, in, in when we have massive uh, queer communities and audiences. That's it. Wait, uh, hold up. You're not playing the game because you don't want to get called transphobic endlessly. Now you know how we felt when you kept doing that. Touch. Pause it. Uh oh. First of all, dumbasses, <laughs> you were being transphobic and Got you fucking proved here. it in the video where you were claiming that I was stupid. Number one. Can I see Number what two, they said that was transphobic? My, my commentary on it. No, they were talking about like women. Uh, uh, well, it was more than that. It was a more holistic approach. Okay, I looked okay, at their. Okay. I looked at their channel. I think it was over like women uh, participate, trans women participating uh, in in sports. But it was a more holistic approach to their channel because I looked. I literally key searched trans in their fucking uh, uh, on their YouTube channel, and there was like a bunch of those like, look at this clown trans person, trans, yeah, crazy. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, because you're not using like the T-slur or something it doesn't mean that you're like okay. not expressly okay. I feel transphobic. That. I feel that. Um, and I, I literally was just like, oh, I don't even want to look at this. Uh, they seem transphobic, and they got super triggered by it and popped off and made like multiple videos, but. The reason why I was talking about that, that is like absolutely clip chimped, and I think they know better, and they're just going along with it to cut a narrative here, just like Ben Shapiro did, just like all these other fucking dipshit right wingers did. What I was talking about in that situation was an effective measure. Like I was talking about boycotts, decentralized boycott movements not working. I was right. It was a decentralized boycott movement against Hogwarts, an IP that is significantly larger than J.K. Rowling herself, and, and not married to J.K. Rowling at all in this day and age, even though she is financially, uh, you know, making, she's being financially compensated for it, that uh, was a silly boycott. I was actually criticizing trans people openly, both in my community and also in general, uh, the, the uh, trans people that were uh, trying to protest this. And talking about how ineffective this was and how I actually had uh, uh, strategized a more effective way to overcome this, uh, this, this uh, PR disaster that was inevitably going to happen by trying to raise funds. But at the time, we had a disagreement. It doesn't even matter now. It's been uh, you know, long gone at this point. You know, it's water under the bridge. Um, I have literally raised money for trans charities alongside trans content creators and legislators uh, immediately on the heels of this uh, controversy regardless. But that was, a, that was a, a commentary that I was trying to cut, which I did, uh, demonstrating that something I saw, I foresaw happening, was going to end up happening. Uh, it was going to end up, ha uh, was, was going to unfold, and it did happen that way, and yet they just cut one fucking second of that, uh, uh, you know, a 20 second clip of that and went along with it. Be like, he's a fucking hypocrite. They're obviously just butthurt at you and oper operating out of bad faith. <sighs> That's it. Transphobic. Yeah. Transphobic. 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 See, it's, all, it's just grievance. They're like, he was mean to us, so we're going to yeah, do this. We're going to say commentary, this now. man. You fucking got me. Transphobic. 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 Transphobes. Transphobic. 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 I mean, you were having a conversation about transphobia. transphobia. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy that I used the term when I was talking about. Also, you uh, stream for like eight hours. I don't know how long that. No, time I was. I know. It's just it's it's disingenuous. This dude said it's, transphobia twenty times. Yeah, it's fucking clown behavior. It honestly. means something. I don't know what. Wow. What you guys didn't even make a point. Okay, this okay. Guy, they didn't make a point. They don't have to because it's like fuck Hassan. That's what it is. Their point is fuck Hassan, and their audience loves that shit. By the and way, I'm sure the that's situations what, aren't even. They're not even comparable. I know. I'm yeah. literally uh, as a you know pro-trans uh, person talking about effective ways to to uh, override a prevailing narrative then and, and and demonstrate that like certain decentralized you boycott movements are going to be times, ineffective <laughs> um all you need to do is go to their channel and search trans and you'll understand whether or not it, it, I, you know i was wrong to make the assertion that they're transphobic or not. Just do it. Here, hey, let's I'll, do it. I'll tell you what, Fresh and Fit. If you want beef, you just gotta understand. They're not Fresh, they are not fresh and Fit. They're not Fresh and Fit. say that. Oh. They're gonna say you're racist. But here. Well, uh, there's two names. Uh, it's Peaches and Cream. Sorry. Okay. Uh, I was gonna, uh, just do it. Just do it. Press escape. This, hit the search this, bar. I'll on tell their you channel. something, guys. Um... <clears throat> I'm skinny, Ethan. Now hit the hit the search bar uh -oh. on their channel. No, their channel. you're gonna ha you're gonna lose the fat card here pretty soon. Oh no! And that's everything. That's all you guys have. Okay. Videos. Go to go to videos. Search. search trans. Just search trans. Okay. 
Females should fight males. Remove all categories. Does this look like trans does this look athlete. like a pro trans uh, 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 channel or someone Words that's are like not violence? Jim Chappelle trans trans woman enters a hot tub with a mom and her six year old daughter. Um, what is wrong with that? <laughs> That's that's a freaking psychotic title. And they always use like that, you know like, what's wrong with that. No, this is rage bait. It's just like anti-trans rage bait. Trans and I'm protesters fucking right. lose like, it. Women impregnate. You're two doing women the same thing that like Gamergate weirdos did back in the day. You're looking at like edge cases or like random <laughs> trans people every now and then behaving in like a fucking insane manner to be like, look at the trans people. They're at it again. And that's actually, it. That's you're totally right. Trans criminal denied entry into female prison. Yeah. Dave Chappelle jokes are dangerous. Trans YouTuber Samantha. Lux, why isn't your business trans competent trans woman? There have a lot trans woman enters female bathroom yeah. and this happened. These How transgender athletes are straight up are lying. I can't believe I made the assumption that these guys might be transphobic after searching trans on their YouTube page. If you're not open to dating a trans person, a transgender person, you might be. Guess who gets beaten up? Trans woman with a criminal record enters a female spa. Pansexual, gender, non-conforming trans man goes on a dating show. Trans woman Leah Thompson breaks records. Cis woman needs to work harder. Women becomes a man, realizes it's very difficult. Yeah, yeah. I mean, look, th there's a lot. There's a lot of fuck. Like, like damn, y'all. Damn. Damn. All these? Okay, now, these don't say transphobic. Yeah, but it's just key search with it. Amazing. Hassan Piker banned for using slurs against whites. Oh my lord! Cracker? Yeah. These these dudes came out against Cracker. I don't yeah. know. I don't remember. I didn't watch it. I, I don't. I don't watch the videos. Uh, like I said, I watched like one snippet, and I was like, eh, not for me. And I moved on. But of course, you can't just do that on a on a live stream. You can't even do that without eleven videos being cut about you, and then uh, have I'm these cool dudes like constantly fucking. I know what you mean. Ass. Like you, you don't want to deal with all that, but yes, like, I'm I'm cool with that. I'm live every I'm day, so like I'm ready. Dudes with like large fan bases when they do shit like this, they're annoying ass fucking fans come into my chat and abuse the the uh, egalitarian process that we have, so that like everyone can speak their mind, uh, and then when they get banned, they cry about it, and they're like lifelong haters. <coughs> okay, let's finish our you're story. You're derailing anyway. the conversation in a narcissistic way when this shit happens. All right, let's uh, let's move on. Elon Musk, yada yada yada. It's a psyop. Okay, that was fucking weird. Uh, then he goes on George Soros posting, which, as most people should know by now, is just like thinly veiled anti-Semitism. He says Soros reminds me of Magneto. I didn't know that this was uh, a thing that was. Uh, anti-Semitic. I, I didn't. I forgot that Magneto was even like he's a Holocaust Jewish, survivor. He's a Holocaust yeah. survivor. But I don't apparently, th this is something that like Jewish kids in in like middle school would like uh, have to withstand. Is what they were. I saw some journalists on my timeline talking about it. I like they were just like it. constantly be called Magneto. I n I've never heard of huh. that. Yeah, that's a new one. Yeah, I didn't know that either. But what does Soros and Magneto have in common other than the fact they're Jewish? Like, I don't like I don't think that Soros can control metal with his mind. <laughs> that's the mode. That's the, the you know, that is I mean? the, kind of the defining feature of Magneto is the uh, magnetic powers. It's in and, the name. Well, yeah. also, he's genocidal. But OK, so apparently I that. was informed that he is uh, very wealthy, though. And George Soros is. And they were both in the Holocaust. Huh. If there um, was anyone. And so who else is very wealthy in this conversation? Dude, Elon, <laughs> right. That's Elon Elon Musk is like another guy? 100 times richer than him. Wait, that's crazy. You're actually absolutely fucking correct, Ethan. Elon Musk is literally more than 10 times wealthier yeah, than he, George Soros. Which and is crazy because George wait, 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 wait. is a billionaire. Wait, yeah. which website is Elon Musk saying this on? Oh, that's right. The fucking website that he bought for $44 billion. <laughs> which is like, that alone is like five times... Sources more work. than five, yes. Yeah. Almost 10x just the website's wor net worth. Uh, George Soros is a fucking broke boy in comparison to Elon Musk. Elon's like, Holy this dude shit. has way too much influence. <laughs> anyway, Elon goes, oh, you know what? Apologies for this post. It was really unfair to Magneto. He stole that joke, by the way, from uh, the, the no. Babylon Bee. Oh. He did. It. Babylon Bee. What if you're going to steal? Steal from the best. Yeah. So then he says, this was the part where it's really weird. He goes, 
Fun fact, my news experience during the Holocaust as a survivor shaped his perspective as well as his depth and empathy. Soros, also a Holocaust survivor, gets attacked and all for his good intentions. What some Americans think are bad nearly because they disagree with whatever. Elon responds, you assume they are good intentions. They are not. He wants to erode the very fabric of society. Soros hates humanity. By the way, it's that... Like, Whoa, nice nuanced take there, bud. So, okay, <laughs> hold up. I need to say something here. <laughs> Normally, I am not a big fan of billionaires. Okay? I'm not a big fan of billionaires. I, I'm not a big fan of how much control they have over uh, politics in, in a, a global capitalist system. I'm not a fan of George Soros. I actually despise him. And he does have a lot of NGOs uh, that operate in uh, whichever countries that the United States wants to do regime change in. And that is by design. That is not an accident. So whenever someone criticizes George Soros or whenever someone says, oh, that's Soros funded, I'm not always like quick to be like, oh, that's anti-Semitic. That's anti-Semitic. That, on the other hand, what Elon Musk said right there <laughs> is literally Jewish puppeteer memes. Like he just, he didn't just say, oh, Soros just like, you know, he's funding like the Open Society Foundation or whatever. And that's like, I don't like that. He's funding a lot of liberal causes that I don't appreciate. He just straight up says he, he wants to erode human. the very fabric of civilization. Soros hates humanity. Soros, a Jewish billionaire puppeteer wants to erode the very fabric of civilization is verbatim verbatim cultural bolshevism mm -hmm. okay and and it, it just straight up what the fascists used to say and still do obviously right so, that in and of itself is like going nah i just hate george soros because he's like a jewish guy that wants to destroy the west is <laughs> that's it you did it you fucking said it he's there uh, this guy responds, George Soros has been so uniquely destructive to law and order in American cities that there's a name for the carnage he's wrought. Soros DAs. His organization described his strategy to Politico in 2016 article. It would change the law, not by going through legislator, but dot, 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 whatever. Elon said, perfectly said, among other things, Soros astutely identified a massive arbit uh, arbitrage opportunity in district attorney elections where a relatively small amount of money has outsized influence. Soros' instructions to his pet prosecutors were essentially to minimize prosecuting even violent criminals. That's why a criminal, someone who had already stabbed his roommate, could brutally assault Dave Chappelle on stage with that same deadly weapon and yet receive merely a misdemeanor. Yeah, George Soros was like, kill Dave Chappelle. <laughs> That's what George Soros wanted to do. He's pro-crime on the streets because he wants to erode... Yeah. I, I, this is this is uh, really yeah. Weird so stuff. Uh, I can't speak to like uh, uh, you know the many different uh, NGOs and and civil society uh, civil society orgs that George Soros has funded uh, in the United States of America. And like I said, all billionaires do this shit. Uh, they just have like pet projects, whether because they personally believe in it or whether because it actually opens up uh, an avenue for them to uh, seek additional profits, which is what Elon Musk does all the fucking time, for the record. Um, but the Soros DA narrative is so fucking stupid. Like, the idea that every single progressive DA is, like, somehow backed by uh, George Soros to, like, allow criminals to let loose and run rampant in the fucking streets of the United <laughs> States of America is such an idiotic concept. It but is mind-boggling. It only makes sense it, when you think of Soros as like a... A purely evil person. Like a comic book villain. Yeah. Yeah. But, but the hilarity is like... The hilarity is that America is the worst carceral state on the planet. Right. We house... <laughs> right, that's... The that's largest... Hard to square up. ...number of prisoners on the fucking planet. Exactly. We house per capita... More prisoners than all these other places like China, Combined. where there's no freedom. You know what I mean? So the idea that like of the population is in prison. That's insane. Four percent of the entire global population lives in the United States of America. Twenty-five percent of the prisoner population is in the United States Soros of America. Soros needs to get we the work. We have a quarter of the entire planet's chained enslaved people That's living yeah. on US soil, doing basically <clears throat> fucking free labor, which is <clears throat> Again, protected by the Constitution under the 13th Amendment, by the way, in, in enslaving a human being under coercive conditions, uh, forcing them to do labor under coercive conditions is slavery, and it's totally justified and allowed in the Constitution. The idea that we have also private prisons on top of that, so there's like further profit-seeking on, on the incarceration of human beings is 
insane to me and most other people that live outside of the United States of America. And yet, the real problem in America is not that our criminal justice system is too fucking psychotic, bloodthirsty, draconian, ineffective in uh, lowering recidivism, but instead not violent and brutal enough. That's Or we're not arresting enough people. Yeah, dude. Everyone, (laughs) literally everyone (laughs) has to be arrested. Everyone that's not Elon Musk or a billionaire... (laughs) Or like, how uh, can you know, we arrest some, more people? We have arrested everybody. Yeah, Europe. some right well, in jail. business owner. Everyone needs to be arrested. You have to just go to fucking <laughs> that, jail. That is a great point. Well, here, this is when it gets really good. So Elon Musk has an interview on CNBC Business, and this guy is giving him like a softball interview. Oh, this guy was so. First of all, I don't even and, know if we can show this on the new uh, YouTube Terms of Service because this is like dick sucking to the max. Oh yeah, it's <laughs> like this is just like straight up uh, reveal thy sh- uh, shaft, my good sir. So, so <laughs> Elon is just trembling that somebody asked him about this, and the guy, if he only, if this guy only asked like one good follow up question, it could have been so good, but. It, what we got why, was good. Why would he? The, the media is not antagonistic towards billionaires. The media is quite literally designed to prop up the capitalist, uh, uh, the capitalist structure. Especially so CNBC. Elon Musk is the personification of capitalism as a human, uh, as a deity of capitalism. So of course this guy, despite Elon's like many uh, uh, idiotic sentiments, uh, even reactionary sentiments that are like uh, uh, transparently right wing to like the the dumbest of children. He has to like soft serve it and try to find a way to excuse it, justify it. He's not asking that question as a gotcha here. He's asking that question to be like, please, please clarify right. so we no. can so that the Tesla stocks don't tank. I want to know how much Tesla stock that fucking piece of shit owns. Oh, by the way, so <laughs> the you guys will notice when he asks, he goes, "Why did you say this shit about George Soros or this mass shooter?" And instead of being, he goes, Elon goes, "It's free speech." And instead of saying, well, why, well, what's your evidence? He says, well, don't you think that's going to hurt your stock? Hey, let's watch. Yeah. Somebody who's talking about the guy who killed children in a mall in, in Allen, Texas. And you, you say something like it might be a bad psyop. I'm not quite sure what you meant, but. Pause it for a second. I said this. I'm sorry. Don't go. Ugh, you love pausing. I do, but like we're gonna run out okay. of time. I just want to say something here, okay? <laughs> that statement. He would never, never be this fucking uh, uh, nice if he saw some random schlub screaming what Elon Musk was saying, which many of them do. Some right wing fucking freak in like a like a like a Baptist church in the South. He would look at that guy with disdain. But when it's the fucking big billionaire uh, poster boy of capitalism sitting across from you inside of his own fucking facility and inside of his own factory, you have to be like, what did you mean by this, Terry? What did you mean by this? You know what he fucking meant by it. (laughs) Yeah, you can see also Elon is like, you really fucking ask me this shit? I'll destroy you, maggot. Oh, uh, in in that particular case, uh, there was uh, a... So, somehow, that, that that's not 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 that the the the, the that the, the obviously people people were killed, but the it was I think incorrectly uh, described uh, you, to be a white uh, supremacist uh, action. The man um, has swastikas. Not in evidence incorrect. For that, oh my god! Uh, was some obscure Russian website that no one's ever heard of that had no followers. That's such a weird thing. You say it's like a massive website there. Um, yeah, it is actually a popular the, website, <laughs> which is weird that like a social media guy doesn't know. He gets uh, that uh, wrong. Uh, uh, another social media website just not used in America. Uh, the, the company that, came, that found this is Bellingcat. Right. And do you know what Bellingcat does? PsyOps. Right. I right. couldn't really even follow exactly yeah. what it was you were was trying it, to right. express. Do, do you think that? Because, like, you know, you're a CNBC guy. Do you actually think that? Well, even no. if you know that that's true, which I say that, I think Bellingcat does uh, work for the CIA and will engage in some psyops every now and then. They are basically an arm of the fucking State Department. However, do you think that liberal guy he, is CNBC? He doesn't agree. He says, I'm fucking, I don't know what the this fuck you're talking about. Bellingcat. Right. And do you know what Bellingcat does? Psyops. Right. Right. I couldn't really he, even he follow says, exactly what it was you were trying I, to I, express. I just, there, I so don't understand. He's like, curious. thank you for the clarity. Oh my the, God. The, the, right, right, right. Oh, thank you for describing it, my good okay. sir. And, and, uh, and, 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 Not like, well, he had, uh, swastikas tattooed on him. 
That's why I don't understand. Why is he still saying this? There's no way that he's not aware that the police are like, yeah, he's covered in swastika. But the journalist, please, couldn't you just ask that? You know what I mean? Like, it's right there. It's right there. And that the information for (laughs) that uh, came from an obscure Russian website and was somehow magically found by Bellingcat, which is a magically company. found. Magically, uh, yeah, magically found by journalists and intelligence agencies. I mean, uh, <laughs> and there's no proof, by the way, that he was not. There's no. I, I would say that there's no proof that he is. Yes, there is. There, He's not, covered in swastika. Swastika on him. Uh, did he say? He tattooed stick, a swastika on his uh, body. Did he? Did he say? Uh, sick <laughs> uh, <laughs> checkmate, liberal. <laughs> I'm so smart. I, I don't bro. know what more evidence that can be other than a swastika dude, dude, tattoo. Dude, it's that's the wild part about this is that like these guys don't fucking hide it. Like the Buffalo shooter was literally like, I'm gonna go to a black neighborhood to a grocery store and kill as many black Buy people up. as possible. Uh, like they openly state it, they openly show it. They want people to understand that they are doing this for white supremacist reasons. They even show where they got radicalized, whether intentionally or unintentionally. Okay, and and these fucking dickheads still are like, oh, I don't know about that. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Was he Ugh. was he saying he loves Hitler while he was shooting people? Uh, uh, I did <laughs> not checkmate. At it's a certain a- point, people need like, are they going to wake up to the fact that? Everybody on the right is ready to sell them out instantly. It's like the January 6th people, like they're all Antifa now or whatever. Like these, yeah. these are like true right. believers. They did it for you. They did it for Trump. And then they're you as just, mag as you it just, comes. And now they're being accused of being yeah. FBI or whatever. I think that's, my they, favorite, that's my favorite trope is that like anytime one of these like fucking basement dwelling dickheads like actually take matters in their own hands, the the same circles that they are inside of, like all of the forms that they're inside of, collectively call them like, you know, uh, uh, gay Antifa. losers. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like they're like, no, nah, that guy's not, that guy's not one of us. He's a, a gay loser psyop, a CIA agent. It's like, no, that guy is you, okay? You're the same. David DePeepy, they did the same shit to him. They were like, oh, David, oh, no, he's just some gay guy. He's gay. He's not one of us, dude. He's like, no, he <laughs> looks and smells exactly like you, you fucking loser. And that's a debate you want to get into on Twitter? Yes. Because we should not be ascribing things to white supremacy uh, if, if, they're, if it's false. Slam dunk, of course. Uh, slam dunk journalism. The guy who killed and then there's more children. clips. I want uh, There's a couple more clips. They're dude, so good. The media would fucking eat anyone else alive, dude. They would be like piranhas you know, do your, with a scent of blood that they the caught. the easiest layup ever. Yeah, anyway, that motherfucker, I'm willing to bet, does not think Bell and Cat is uh, doing psyops, which they are. Or they are funded by the National Endowment for Democracy. Like, they are they are a cutout for, uh, of, the, of the State Department, certainly. All that right. doesn't change the reality that, like, sometimes they're going to do... They have good journalists on there, on their payroll as well. And sometimes they do cover stories, or in many instances, they cover stories. Uh, it might ha- it might have a biased slant towards, like, American imperialist efforts, but they still have the capacity to cover the reality, the truth. Here's my favorite. This one goes so off the rails, it's, like, really embarrassing. You know, do Hard your to tweets watch. hurt the company? Are there Tesla owners who say, I don't agree with his political position because... And I know it because he shares so much of it. Or are there advertisers on Twitter that Linda Yaccarino will come and say, you got to stop, man. Or, you know, I can't get these ads because of some of the things you tweet. Uh-oh. Oh, he's going to pop off. Oh, One he of paused his so much. reflective pauses. He's so hot, dude. He's thinking. <laughs> you know, I'm reminded of... Uh, Yes. The, the, the scene in The Princess Bride. Yes. <laughs> great movie. Fuck, man. It is a great um, movie. Where he confronts the person who killed his father. And he says... Princess <laughs> Bride! I remember that scene being cooler. I remember that scene being cooler. Uh, it was such a cool scene. Uh, I loved it. Uh, dude, I you're you are so incapable of speaking. Holy fuck! Damn, he so you just don't care. Killed that line read. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. This is important to hear. And he says, "Off of me money." He's doing an accent too. Of me power. I don't care. By the way, that's not the line. By the way, <laughs> you're the richest, one of the most powerful people in the world. I don't think you're worried about money and power. You know, he's like, he's like, I don't care about of money. Of course, and power. he cares about money like, and power. Two hundred billion dollars. Of course, he cares about money and power. That's why he's a billionaire. And it like, 
you know, the 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 idea that he's like operating on some like other spectrum of of uh, genuine interest. Like, okay, what's the genuine interest then? Like doing transphobia. That's what like you're like. That's I don't care. No matter how much you throw at me, like I'm still gonna uh, put up uh, non gag memes from 2017. <laughs> Off of me. Because well, he he actually. I'm still gonna post i funny memes that only divorced dads laugh at. I think this uh, is the first time in his life he's ever been liked by people, and so I think he. No, he's not. He does no. The right they love. No, him. I think they're he's losing favor. Well, I think yeah. that that is he like likes part of the being reason likes on Twitter. It makes him feel good, you know. I, I, think, I think he was he way was, more universally loved yeah. before. Yeah, he like, was loved. He was cherished. You and used loved. to love him, Ethan. I Dude, mean. when he lost the Mr. Yeah. Beast vote, it was fucking over for him. Okay, it's <laughs> Jover. <laughs> Wait, what was even, the Mr. Beast? Vote? Even Mr. Beast was like, "Come on, Elon," you know. Uh, oh yeah, when he's like, is, "Yo, this, this is, is not you. Please take your phone. <laughs> please turn off your phone." <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. I don't care. See, you just don't care. That's not how the scene went you at watched. all, yeah. too. It's I was like, like, I love that movie. I know it really well. I've never and seen it. And I, I was like, I what? I've never seen Prison's Bride. Bruh! It's a good movie. Okay, whatever. It doesn't... Share well, with... A anyway, let's finish the clip. You have to say. I'll say what I want to say. And if, 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 uh, if the consequence of that is losing money, so be it. By the Damn, way, he's so as, fucking brave. As the CEO of Tesla publicly uh, traded company, I'm pretty sure that's a violation of his yep. uh, fiduciary. Yup. It don't even matter though because he can say whatever the fuck he wants, and like the market reacts in a yes. way that it's not. Yeah. It, no, it doesn't normally react. Uh, it's weird. So and then uh, there's one. There's just a few more which I love. By the okay, way, you watch some of those while I go pee again. Okay. The actor, by the way, Wait, who, who, who did the scene <laughs> from Princess Bride, actually quote tweeted, says, the I do not think, yeah, I do not think it means what you think it means, which is a Princess Bride quote. Yes, and actually is relevant to what the fuck he's talking about. I it's love the him. scene where he's confronting the man who killed his father, and he says, offer me money, offer me power, and he, uh, offer me all the riches in the world, and the guy's like, yes, I'll anything do it. you want. Yeah. And he's like, I want my father back, you son of a bitch, and then stabs him. Had totally no fucking wrong. relevance to the scenario he, he just, at all. He just wanted to see him beg. <laughs> yes, this yeah. is crazy. Ugh. So moving on here, uh, Elon Musk explains he's not anti-Semitic. Why would anybody think that about me? Uh, George Soros. Well, I'm looking for it because I want to make sure I quote it properly. But, I mean, you know what you wrote, but... You basically I said it reminds me of Magneto. This is like, you know, calm down, people. This is not like made up like a pit. Explain. I would want to know how he reminds you of Magneto. I'm actually would love to hear your analysis. Well, you, out of it. <laughs> you also <laughs> no, you said he wants. Uh, what? What? That's scary. So wrote the very fabric of civilization, and Soros hates humanity. <laughs> like when you do something like that, do you? Yeah, think I think it's funny because he goes, "It's just a Magneto analogy. Calm down." And then he goes, "Well, you said he hates humanity." Think that's about, true. That's my opinion. No, okay. that's true. But why share it? Why share it? Especially because, I mean, why share He goes, not that what you're saying is crazy. Right. Just why say it? Well, because it's CNBC. It's like, it's the business network. And so, like, I get it. Psycho. Their their angle is like, you're, you know, you're damaging the company. You're like, why say that? Just keep it private or whatever. Yeah, they, they don't give a fuck that he's saying it. Share it when people who buy Teslas may not agree with you. Advertisers on Twitter may not agree with you. Um, why not just say, hey, I think this. You can tell me. We can talk about it over there. You can tell me. I love that shit. Yo, if you think George Soros is, is like uh, part of the Jewish cabal, tell me. I love that. Just not on camera. <laughs> right. Friends, but why share it widely? I mean, I, I, this is freedom of speech. I'm allowed to say what I want. You wanted. absolutely are. That's such a pathetic juvenile response. Like, grow the fuck up. Idiot. Uh, sweet, sweet. Of course, a stupid moron. He's just like fried. Imbecile. Too, by the way. Like this guy, too much fucking microdosing. I think you're right. Yeah. I think he, you're absolutely right. <laughs> but I'm trying to understand why you do because you have to know it's got a. There, it, it puts you in a in the middle of a, the partisan divide in the country. It makes you a, a lightning rod for criticism. I mean, do you like that? I. You know, people today are saying he's an anti-Semite. I don't think you are. No, I'm definitely, I'm, I'm, like, I'm like a pro-Semite, <laughs> if anything. <laughs> I, Which I don't like either. I don't like people who are like, I love Jews. Jews are the greatest. Jews are great businessmen. Jews are awesome. <laughs> I'm a pro Jews them. are great with money. Yeah. That's also, like, kind of fucked up. I believe that probably is the case. Yes. But why would you <laughs> even introduce the idea? God, he's such a fucking clown, this journalist. I hate him almost yes. more than I hate I, Elon. I mean, and I hate we, Elon. We don't like this a, a George Soros interview. <laughs> no, um, God, no. Oh, then I, he goes, let's 
let's not talk about George Soros anymore. The God, no. The, the case. I, I mean, it looks, we, we don't want to make this a, a George Soros interview. No, um, God, no. God, no. no. God, no. Yeah, you wouldn't want to, like, actually do fucking news media shit. Like, you wouldn't want to do, like, anything that a journalist would do in this situation, which is prodding and trying to truly investigate why uh, Elon Musk has these kinds of resentments oh. or where he learns these things. By the uh, way, if you want to know why he's Soros posting, George Soros dumped his Tesla stock early up. in the year. It, but it was only, it was 16 million or something like that, but I guess he's bought, heard about it. Uh, but there's one more clip, and then we can uh, send Hassan on his way. Yeah. Also worth mentioning, Elon Musk was subpoenaed in relation to Epstein, J.P. Morgan lawsuit. That oh, he says, responded to that, too. He responded to, like, unusual whales uh, posting about it. Okay. Do we have that? We should pull that. Uh, unusual whale. I, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I saw that Twitter interaction. I, I, I'm a big believer. Here he is saying that workers need to get back in the office, damn it. That, that 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 people need to are more productive when they're in person. Um, is that true? And, is that um, backed by research? And and and, and, and really, man, I, and the whole, the whole sort of work from home thing. It's like, it, it, I, I I think it's. I'm so mad at this. Look, there are some exceptions, but I, I kind of think that that the whole notion of work from home is is a bit like the you know, the the, the, the fake Marie Antoinette quote, "Let them eat cake." Mm -hmm. It's like. It's like, it's like, really? You're going to work from you're home? You're a billionaire! Well, yeah, you're a billionaire! <laughs> you work from home! You're, Everything is your home! The, wait, you don't even you, work! You're, you're a billionaire! World. You're a billionaire wait, who wait, claims wait. he's founded companies because he had enough capital to fucking buy them! You've never done a fucking honest day of work in your goddamn life, you Emerald Mind recipient! Emerald Mind Wealth recipient piece of shit apartheid fuck ass! Oh my god! <laughs> he makes me so mad that he's like, Oh, the laptop generation is so lazy. They're not like my factory workers. It's like, bitch, you don't want to pay your factory workers and you don't want to fucking pay the laptop uh, guys either. So shut the fuck up. Your entire existence is propped on both the laptop guys and the fucking factory assembly line guys literally generating value for you. That's all you do. Fuck. How is he saying... <laughs> It's insane. It's insane that like a billionaire could fucking say this and not like, I don't want to say anything TOS related. I don't have a button in front of me, but like it, it, it. makes I, me, got you. Yeah. it makes me very, it, it, it makes me very angry when I hear the, the pathetic fucking fail son who has been propped up every goddamn step of the way. He was failed upwards. Who's been elevated by, by, you know, lucking himself into uh, corporations that they basically pushed him out of, but he still got a tidy profit at the end of their, uh, you know, at the end of their exit, like PayPal, and then uh, taking that money and oh, like the PayPal CEO hates him. That's what I yeah. mean. Like he literally lucked into He's everything not, he that he did. He was shit, a grifter and a con man the whole way, yeah. and he still is. And yet, so many people don't see it because like he is idolized as. A, a, a super wealthy billionaire guy, and if you think Elon Musk doesn't deserve uh, or didn't work harder or smarter, or especially a billion times harder or smarter than the average fucking worker, then all of a sudden this entire system that is propped up by the lie of meritocracy falls apart. So instead of facing that fucking grim reality, you just turn around and go, no, 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 no. Every, every naysayer is just jealous and stupid and a, a communist who's a hypocrite probably. But Elon Musk, he's not hypocritical. He's actually brilliant. He has to be brilliant. Otherwise, why the fuck am I toiling away at my dumbass fucking desk job where I have no autonomy over my own life? Where I spend 80% of my fucking adult lives, uh, adult life before I die eventually, uh, and, uh, from the banality of existence, uh, I, I can't think of that. I, I don't want to think that that system is for nothing. I want to think that like I will too become like Elon Musk one day, and that he worked really hard, and I'm just not working hard enough. But one day I will, and I'll fucking be just like him. How is it that he can say they are so entitled to say let them eat cake? You're talking about your employees. Like, are you? It's mad. Everyone else who made your car come work to the fact work in the factory. You're gonna make the people who. Make your food that gets delivered that- I don't think the people building the cars care if the engineers work from home or not. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? Dude, they can't work the, from the home? thing is, like, there are plenty of engineers that could work from home, and I'm sure some of them do, actually. The irony, of course, is that, like, every C-suite, uh, C-suite, like, how do you say sweet? C-suite? You got it. Sweet? Am I sweet. saying it right? You're saying it right. Fuck. Okay, ESL. Uh, <laughs> every fucking C-level executive and every manager 
is already fucking working from home. Those guys get all the freedom on the fucking planet. But God forbid you're like an entry-level position that finally has a little bit of a crumb of fucking autonomy in his own life. All of a sudden, that's like a big no-no because we can't manipulate you as much if you're not directly in our line of sight. You have to come in and do the two hours of work that you normally would do where you actually are doing work and then the the four other, five other, six other hours of just like fucking around and like making it seem like you're busy here in the office rather than at home because, you know, that's what we got to do because it's, there's commercial it, it, real estate it, it, uh, at feel, stake here. He, he, uh, I, I don't know what it is. It, he needs to feel like he owns them. He wants to feel like he's getting his worth out of them. And they're, the fact that they're living that easy life, you know, that they can go shit mm -hmm. and have a coffee break when they want. And you know, That's I, I think it's primarily all of those things, but I do have to also point out that he is a man who owns a car company talking about how people, it's immoral to not commute to work fair. every day. Fair. Fair. All right, that's one a little. Of it, but, I, I, no, no, no. That's but not every single person, fair, including as that big, fucking, but it is include, fair. Every single person, including that monkey in the suit, the CNBC guy. Okay, they literally can. They despise the work from home uh, mentality. All the bosses hate it. All the CEOs hate it. That's why there's been like a hundred fucking op eds written on the New York Times and Wall Street Journal about how like work from home is destroying sure society. Research shows that. Productivity does not decrease with as a matter of fact, in certain instances increases. I don't and that yeah. the new method is probably going to be a couple days off, couple days on. Yeah, I mean we know we know whatever. It doesn't even but, matter you know, though. Yeah. It doesn't even but matter the because that, it, they come fix your house. They they can't work from home, but you can. Bro, what are, you're so fucking dumb. Everybody yeah. be, just because a mechanic has to like fix on a car physically in a garage that everybody has to drive to work. What the fuck are you saying? One other aspect is dumb. One other aspect is Elon Musk is right. As far as delivery drivers, as far as people in the service sector, they have to fucking go to work to pay them more. For so that. they should get paid fairly. Yeah. They should get paid more as a matter of fact, yeah, that not on the virtue uh, of replaceability, but on how much value did they bring to the fucking table? But you won't do that because you're a fucking piece of shit billionaire <laughs> who designed a system that benefits from not doing that. Mm -hmm. But of course, Does that seem it's all bullshit. Right? It's a way to like drive animosity amongst the working class. It's literally class solidarity in action I, with the wealthy I, I fucking capital owner journalist talking to the wealthy capital owner billionaire. Where they both agree, like, yeah, work from home is bad, right? These fucking lazy, entitled, pathetic work from home guys. Uh, real, you know, the, the people working at the oil rig don't have to do that. Well, okay. Pay the people working at the oil rig more. That's but the whole but, point. But they're acting like the dudes at, on the oil rigs are like, dude, I'm pissed that I have to come be here physically while everybody else gets to work from home. Nobody thinks like that. Unless you're a fucking freak like they might, Elon Musk. They might be directed to think that way if he keeps... Hammering on that's that. the whole point. That's, the, that's, that's why he's saying it right, yeah. to, to fucking antagonize and and create class division. Mm -hmm. That is the purpose. There's a sole purpose of sentiments like this. And he's a piece and they of do it. He's seen as a usually they do it through racism. Like that's the most effective method of like antagonizing and and creating class divisions, uh, creating divisions inside of the uh, labor force to like harp on the uh, the strings of white supremacy and be like, yeah. Black people are like this. They're getting a lot of benefits, aren't they? What the fuck? They should work harder. And then every fucking white worker doesn't even realize that they have the exact same, exact same material needs and material demands from their workforce on the boundaries of class, on the boundaries of being fucking working class. But they, they can't even think about that because now they're focused on the white supremacy angle. I find it interesting that he can't even really defend the work from home other than saying it's not fair. Like... Since when was that an argument Polish? for anything? Yes. It's not fair. Yeah, I mean, lots of things are not fair. Like, yeah, it's not fair. Yeah, <laughs> life isn't fair. I mean, yeah. we've all heard and that. It's, 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 it's a productivity issue, but yeah. it's also a moral issue. Ironic. It's, it's a moral not. issue. It's a moral That's issue. Crazy. Yeah, yeah I think your moral, existence moral, is a moral issue. He goes, uh, never mind nope. productivity. It's a moral issue. What? What's with the work from home bullshit? So um, frustrating. I fucking hate this. Because they're everyone else to not work from home while they do. And yet, there's still pushback, by the way. It's still going on. This battle is still happening. I mean. Leaders of organizations, and I speak to plenty of them, I want people back. I want people back. Three days a week, they're still battling. Uh, it, it's not clear yeah, that good for them. it's ever going to The workers change have more to, power. People are not coming back no, no, five no, days no, a week. Look, look, people, the, 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 the laptop class is living in La La Land. The look. laptop class? Oh, brother. Yeah, I love that. The laptop class. Professional managerial class. The laptop class. It's like, dude, what are you? Wait, hold on. You You're are worse right. than the laptop he, class. He is, he is actually, this is class warfare. You're right. <laughs>
<laughs> no, he's <laughs> just, laptop he class. Is, yeah, no, he's literally trying to mystify yeah, class, yeah. not on the real boundaries of like worker, proletarian versus bourgeois yeah. capital owner, but instead on the boundaries of like laptop class versus Starbucks baristas versus okay. service sector workers. But as I said, no, the they all are wage laborers. They do not make money from the capital that is accumulating in a fucking bank account, okay? They are actually putting in work, they get paid a contracted fucking wage, okay? And their surplus labor value is being extracted from them. It doesn't matter if you're a fucking auto mechanic, it doesn't matter if you're working in a white collar job, it doesn't matter if you're a fucking marketing manager, okay? That's happening to you, and people can never recognize that and create a shred of the class solidarity that billionaires and the fucking donkeys in the media that like prop them up show on a daily fucking basis. If there is class war that's happening, and I truly do believe it's happening every fucking day, the reason why so many people cannot recognize it is because they don't recognize their class position and constantly fight on these idiotic, newly created boundaries along the lines of like laptop class, the work from home class that guy is a worker but he's making more than me he's in a union he's making more than me why the fuck is he demanding more i'm suffering here he should suffer too it's a crabs in a barrel mentality it's what i like to call peasant mentality where you justify that existence if you're a part of the working class and you fucking get sucked into this billionaire propaganda you're a fucking dumbass okay all right we just wake wrap, up we got one more thing here just to wrap it up yeah so elon musk has always said i don't know uh, Epstein, there's a photo of me and G, G Lane, but like, I don't know her. She photo, she like photobombed me. Well, he's be being subpoenaed in a lawsuit alleging that Epstein actually made an intro for Elon Musk on behalf of Elon Musk to uh, Chase Bank to his like, I guess, private uh, equity guy there. And so they want to know the nature of that relationship. Uh, Elon responded on Twitter. He says, this Crete never advised me on anything whatsoever. The notion that I would need or listen to financial advice from a dumb crook is absurd. Uh, JP, JP Morgan let Tesla down 10 years ago, despite having Tesla's global commercial banking business, which we then withdrew. I never have forgiven them. Okay, so answer the subpoena instead of ignoring it. Tell them that. Prove it. The subpoena, I believe, was because he was dodging it, is now the, they got approval from the judge to just deliver it to Tesla, the company. They couldn't find him to serve him. Right. He was dodging it. Well, they couldn't find a server because, like, his live doxing coordinates are no longer available on Twitter. Oh, <laughs> right. Got it's him. this, you know, it's this laptop class work from home mentality. Mm -hmm. If he was in the fucking office, right? Then you know we'd be yeah, able we'd to be find able to him. find him. You're this so guy's right. flying around on his Elon, private you know, jet. Yeah. I, you know, uh, this is it's, absurd. Dude, work, the idea. Oh, sit God, down and it, work. It is. I can't. I. I'm like. I'm still shaking <laughs> from the fucking <laughs> anger that I feel towards like. The most spoiled brat on the fucking planet Get your fucking ass having the work. audacity to talk shit about the laptop class. Like, Let him what eat the cake. fuck? That are was you wild. Saying? That was how wild. the fuck does anyone agree with that? God damn it, everyone's so fucking stupid. I don't me... know how many agree with it, but uh, no, we'll I've, see. no, they do. They look at that and go, Elon is brave, bold, beautiful, deserves, deserving of his wealth, uh, definitely did it uh, through honest means. Uh, that the system is not flawed, and yeah, he is right. All those laptop class guys, they're gay. They went to school, they got marketing degrees. Right, I gotta go, I have to go. Soy. Oh, now you have to go. Yeah, and we've gone too long, I have okay, to go. Okay, well, alright. I have an interview I need to attend. I know, I know. Alright. Wow. So much to say. What an app. Fire so app. Say. We just got a $20 donation that said fire app with fire emojis from David Whisper, so shout okay. out. So much to talk about, so little time. The sun is back. We're back. We're back. Hell yeah, baby. We are Hell yeah, brother. terrorists, my friends. And uh, we will be back next week to spread more terrorism. Yeah, correct. Of the white variety. Oh, yeah. Yep. Domestic terrorism. Of the domestic variety. Uh -huh. All right, guys. Ta-ta. Love you. See you next time.